Real Life Street Stars. <laughs> Woo! Got the legend in the building. Tony Neal. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, I'm on the couch. Hey, man. The, the infamous blue couch, the, the man. The couch that Jaguar built. <laughs> yeah. She built that motherfucker. Hurry Mo, Ho, Mo 3. Mo 3, man. Mo 3, man. That's my boy, man. Mo 3. Man, yeah. how you doing, brother? I'm good, man. Good. Glad to be here. Man, uh, I want to, I don't want to go for, all the way from the beginning, but we have a a crowd that may not know the history mm -hmm. and the, the individual that we have sitting on the couch, man. The caliber, the, the, the caliber of the individual, man. Uh, one of the world-renowned DJs, Tastemakers. You know what I'm saying? Tony Neal, man. Uh, let's just give him a brief synopsis of, you know, how you got in the, how you got in this, man. Oh, man, I, I mean, shit. I don't know how brief you want to be. <laughs> like, man, we just, we're going to take five minutes on this uh, shit because we got a lot to go through. Uh, born baby in Detroit, but I'm from Milwaukee. Okay. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And uh, then I spent most of my life now in Miami. So I've been in my 20s and on in oh. Miami. Yeah, but yeah. Hold on. So, so you grew up during, did you grow up during the BMF and the Cheddar Boys grew era? Up. Shit, they, they grew up under me. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Uh, paint the yeah, picture. Nah, 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 at that time, yeah, me and me and they were at the same age. So yeah, they was doing their thing, but I wasn't over there. Gotcha, gotcha. I wasn't in Detroit. I was in Milwaukee when that gotcha. was going on. But we had our own little thing going on, with, like with Eric B and Rakim and all them niggas coming to the crib in Milwaukee. Yeah, that's that's what was happening with us. We Wait, like, what? So Eric, so you was like neck and neck partners with Eric B and well, Rakim? My older cousins was right there, you know, with them. They, you know, they was doing, they, they was shake, moving and shaking. You know what I'm saying? They moving and shaking. You know. Damn, so you oh, yeah. got a whole different view of how trash niggas are now oh, yeah, compared nah, to. Nah, 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 for real, like. Niggas was different back then. Uh, Can you give us a story, like a like a, a Rock Kim, Eric B story, just like the hunger, the, the the things that you saw in them early? Well, you saw that the album, right? Album cover, yeah. right? Okay, then. Hey, that was, that was happening before the album cover, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you saw that paid in full album cover. Niggas had the, the Gucci jackets being made and the shit. The big like, old dookie ropes. Oh, yeah, that shit was real. That shit, that wasn't no fake shit. And that shit wasn't hollow either. <laughs> you know what I'm that shit, yeah, that was real shit going on. Man, you know... It's crazy because, like, when you look at that paid in full cover, mm -hmm. it's like hip hop is finally starting to get back to that. Because for a minute, it was like boys was just rapping and wasn't getting no money. I didn't look like it was no money in it. But then it finally started getting back to that fly and flashy. Um, what was the mo what when it was when you was seeing this in this era? Like, do you see any thing being anything's being repeated? Like. As far as style or trends or oh hell yeah hell yeah like niggas niggas went to big clothes the skinny clothes the big yeah, clothes like, man, back to skinny clothes niggas going back to big jeans now <laughs> bro yeah, yeah. man bro it's so crazy because it's like I wouldn't call it long I would call it wide <laughs> wide <laughs> like a lot of these niggas navel showing and shit I don't know, I don't know but they yeah, got wide crop ass top. shirts yeah yeah, yeah I ain't, nah. I'm off that. I ain't, I ain't going that. I'm stopping right there. <laughs> I, ain't wearing, I ain't wearing no crop tops and shit, nigga. But you know. So what was the culture like back in Miami when you first arrived, man? Give us the scene. Give well, us the land. Well, how, how I got there. Let me see how I put it. When I when I was at home, I was one foot in and one foot out in the street in yeah. Milwaukee, and I was DJing uh, at the spot downtown called the Interns East and 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 Loop. In like 90, 91, it was, it was kind of fading off, off the born band in the USA and all that shit. So they came up there and did a show, but the promoter didn't really promote the show well. And so uh, I was DJing. I was opening for another popular DJ. He passed away, Darren D, rest in peace. And uh, I was just opening for him. He liked to carry his crates and shit, however I could get, you know. And uh, Luke heard me DJ and he said, nigga, you need to be in Miami the way you DJ. Walked into the DJ booth and me, I'm trying to. Impress my eyes. album cover sat behind me, all the albums and shit. So when a nigga said that to me, I just looked back and I that album cover with them women, with them niggas looking in between them women's legs. I said, I'm out this motherfucker. <laughs> I, when he said that to me, yeah. and I thought I could be able to DJ in Miami. Oh shit, you know, you a nigga like Luke say that to you, it's like oh, I'm gone. I, it was like that for me. I didn't have nothing at the time. I didn't think I had no kids. Later on, I found I had one, but at the time. I didn't think I had no kids. So I was like, I'm out. And I, and I started taking the Greyhound bus, but I had no money. 
So I started, you know, doing what I was doing up there in Miami. In Miami. I had shit wrapped around my legs on the Greyhound bus, traveling back and forth on the Greyhound, you know, getting it out. I was trying to live and trying to figure my way out. Nigga, I didn't even know nothing about Miami. When I got down to or when I got down to when I got down to Orlando, nigga, I thought I was in Miami because it got hot. Yeah. I'm from I'm from it's cold. Yeah. So when I got to Orlando and started Port St. Lucie, I'm here, I'm telling niggas I'm in Miami, nigga, I'm about three hours away still. Yeah. <laughs> I said, ain't no where the fuck I was going. But that's how I ended up getting down here, you know. Uh, but yeah, like the streets, get the fuck out of them streets. It just had a lot of crazy shit going on at home. So like when you was in Miami, right, and you DJing, who was like the Lynn Bias of Miami? The nigga that was everybody thought was gonna make it and either he died too early or it you know just didn't pan out i don't want to say i don't really know i don't even think that i don't even think when i got there the team was there yet so it's still on football mm. yeah i don't even think the team was there when i got there no nah, it wasn't it wasn't nothing no nah, 91 no nah. damn so like when you when you go back and I watch a lot of documentaries and I'm watching like the Griselda documentary <laughs> and, and they just just the cocaine trade was just so prevalent in well, Miami. Well, did you, you did you see that? Have you have been down there at the time and seen all the, the way the downtown was being built and the cranes and shit downtown and said, you knew they wasn't doing with no regular money. Like mm-hmm. they, they had like it was so much money that in the banks couldn't even hold that shit buried. They was digging up shit out in yards and shit of money. This was money Damn. all over the place until, you know, they started tr- you know, crack it down on them, but that shit was built on drug money. That's a fact. You know what I'm saying? You know, who was who was like when when you stepped in there? Who was like the the shot callers or the big the niggas to look out for back then? Like who was the ones that really make things? Oh, yeah, Jamaicans. <laughs> when I got there, it was the Jamaicans. You know, shower posse and shits like that it was Jamaicans when I got there. Um, but uh. A lot of people start dying and going to jail and get deported and shit like that. So later on, it became the Haitians. But but it was Jamaicans. So, you know, being a DJ, mm-hmm. it comes with a certain power, especially like when you start building your name and you start commanding the crowd. And, because we, everybody knows the crowd going to follow their DJ no mm-hmm. matter where they go. He's going to have his people going to follow him. Uh, how long did it take you to... Uh, build that name up and, and start, you know, commanding a certain type of money in, in crowds and whatnot. Once I started promoting myself, <laughs> I, I kept my name, I kept my, my real name because I um, I wanted to be able to promote. I didn't want to have no nickname, no moniker yeah. because I wanted to be able to DJ for everybody, older, young. So mm-hmm. that's why I kept Tony Neal, my name. And uh, just shorten it out and uh, just started using my name and you know, people know you. They already knew me from the streets. Right. I had a big female following, so I just kind of converted it over to DJing. And I already, I already, I started DJing at skating rink when I was young. And so I was always a good mixer. I didn't talk though. I didn't really talk. Mm. And so I didn't start talking on the mic until like '92, '93. You know what I'm saying? How when you uh started doing that, like MCing it, like did you? How did you? How was your attitude like? Because you know you got to be a certain type of to get. That MC and off. Like, nah, I just talk like I talk. Like, okay. Like, like I'm talking to you, I talk like that on the mic. Okay. I talk like this on the radio. I, I didn't change nothing. I didn't do, sorry, I, I ain't do none of that shit. Nah, because you know certain niggas nah. be like, yeah, nigga, you want to. Never. <laughs> never. I was never that. I cut the music off and talk for about two minutes if I want to. I was yeah. never, I was never, I had that kind of command on the crowd. I could stop the music, play a new record. Uh, say, I grab a record from a nigga I just got. And I feel this how I listen to it and I feel this how I stop the party and, and break that damn record and talk to the people because they trusted me. You got to, a DJ got to get people to trust them. And that's another thing I was saying, going to ask, like, because when you get to a certain level, they already know the, the entertainment are, the, it's going to be there. The, um, the, the, it's like what we say, it's going to be crunk when this DJ. Man, I, you know what it is? Um, I think I, I, Early on, I wanted to be an A&R anyway. Yeah. So, so the DJM was a part of it, but I actually wanted to be the person to pick the record. I didn't know a lot of the business shit that I know now. Right. But a lot of the records that you hear now, I, I did the A&R on, like Cupid Shuffle. That's one of mine. You know what I'm saying? Oh, wow. I did all the slide records with Wobble. I yeah. did. I did. Uh, I did fucking uh, Casper when he, you know, when he 
came out with the cast for Sly. I did all those. It was a thing. I had a little thing for the Sly records. You know what I'm saying? So from 99, when Casper dropped his record to started working with Cupid and, you know, helped him rearrange that motherfucker and then grabbed the damn Wobble record off the old album and started playing it like that was those are those are factual things that I did. And I, I had a knack for that. You know what I'm saying? I had a knack for either grabbing an old record off something that this people skipped over. Right. Or something brand new. Yeah, Mr. Collar Park came in here and he actually, like I said, he credited you for oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. And, and I just thought that was crazy, the fact that it came out and it flopped. And then you turned that into a phenomenon. I called him. It was, we was going into New Year's Eve of 2010. And I had these girls dancing off of it. They was at a wedding. They followed me from a wedding. And they was doing the dance. And I'm watching and they started following the more girls start. And I called him. Late night, I said, hey, nigga, where's that, where's that boy uh, V.I.C. at? He said, man, they dropped him on one. I said, well, I said, undrop him, nigga. Find that nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I, said, I said, because I think that that wobble shit that y'all tried to do before, I think that that shit is going to be something. And I videotaped it on my Blackberry. It's a bullshit ass video, but I sent it to him. He said, where the fuck you at? I said, I'm in Milwaukee. He said, God damn. I said, yeah. And so... From then, it just, it just, dog, it just flew. And then, then one of the little cats down here, uh, he kind of spiced it up. It's the one dude, it's the dude down here. He, he telling people he made up the damn, but he did. But he, he spiced that shit up and made more of the younger people get on it. That's you know cool. what I'm saying? But uh, I forgot that dude's name down here. He's from down here. Yeah. White dude, little white kid. Oh. You talking about the white dude that be that be dancing yeah, yeah, shit? Yeah, yeah. Like uh, what's that? Uh, I don't know. But. Nah, but yeah, he um, yeah, I will say that he he did his thing and pushing it. You know what I'm saying? But the initial situation, I took that off an old album, and that's what I like to do. I like to do that. I just do that at home too a lot. So this is what I was gonna ask you, and this is free game for any. This is game for any artist out here listening. When does an artist? When should an artist know to just keep? Grinding a record versus give up on a record. Oh man, Listen, I'm just I'm just today with the Ken Folk Thug. That record came out in 08. Oh shit. And right now, it's it might be the most viral record on TikTok. Oh, wow. I mean on, on hip hop side. That's at 9.7 billion views and videos. Megan doing it, the, the, these these talk shows, Jimmy Kimball and all the motherfuckers just making dances to this dump drum. I don't even know. I don't even know how to dance go my damn self. But I seen the numbers. I'm looking at everybody doing their different variations of the dance. But I'm saying this to say, I always tell people don't give up on their records, man. Because sometimes if you make the record, it's for somebody. If, if, if you find the audience, no matter if somebody call you whack, it's somebody because you made this record. It's somebody out there that like your record. Well, so, so, okay, I guess the question is, right, you had the wherewithal and you had power to make it push. So how would a like, because if Vic didn't know that, if he didn't find a Tony Neal to apply that pressure, that, I, no, that record would have just fell no, off. No, no, no. Right? I did it myself. It wasn't no Vic finding me. I actually started playing it. That's what I'm saying. If, if Vic didn't have you to do that, then no, that, no, no, no. Listen, they had already tried to put that record out. Got you. I just one day on some random Try, try to get another dance because Cupid was so successful. Yeah, yeah. And I just pulled that off the wobble dance. Yeah. Off the album. Yeah. At a wedding reception. And then the girls followed me to the party. And we did it New Year's Eve. That was it. It was like that shit. It wasn't no, hey, I need you to work this record. VIC calling me. So no, no, no. He's out, he's way out the picture. We didn't even know where he was at. You know what I'm saying? And I it was just from me seeing those girls, there were like 20 of them. I said, yo. I called him. I said, hey, man. Mm -hmm. Hey, man. <laughs> well, I don't know what he's doing, but you need to, you know. And I had, I had a lot of stories like that, man. I've had a lot of stories like that where I felt like something that I, like here in Dallas, my, my, my story being here is because I, I didn't like mixtapes. I didn't like when niggas gave me mixtapes. I want a single. Let me push the record. The only that got me listening to mixtapes, two, no, it's three niggas, three. DJ Drama, Bigger Ranking, and DJ Deuce, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm down here with Deuce, he keeps trying to force his mixtape on me, so 
Um, I had this cat that, I don't know if y'all remember the dude that had the Cadillac dealership and his son was rapping and I would come pick up the car and drive. Was it Crest or Crown? Crown? What? I forgot. Anyway, he would give me a car to drive. He, he's the manager at the dealership and he would give me a car to drive every time I came to Dallas. And uh, it was like 06, 05, 06. And I was drive two years. Twisted, that, Twisted was in jail. That was the last person I worked with. A couple of Mexican artists, but Twisted was the one I was working with here. And then I started coming out here, going to Mike Mood Swings, uh, conferences and shit like that. Yeah. And so I, I, started, I started taking interest in the scene. And I said, damn, this shit need to be out. But I didn't hear nothing good like that I wanted. So Deuce was in the car with me one day. And he said, hey, man, t me like DJ Deuce, Nate Quick, um, DJ Phil, these were like the first DJs in the core right. in Dallas. Um, I'm, I'm missing somebody. But for sure, Nate, Deuce, Quick. Yeah, Nate, Nate is Quick. Nate, Quick. Nevertheless, um, he gave me the mixtape. It said, fuck you, I'm from Dallas. <laughs> he was like, man, I need to just listen to this, dog. Listen to it while you riding back to the hotel, listen. Put it in, I read the shit, it had Tuck, it had the, the, the niggas with the Get It Bitch record, it mm -hmm. had Duro on it, young nigga. I was like, all right, so I'm rolling, I'm rolling. I put the Capri, Caprice music was on that shit. Yeah. I was like, so all that, first record I heard was the Caprice music. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I said, ooh, shit. Okay. Man, that not a stain on me came on. I said, bro, this shit is out of here. I got to do my conference down here. So at that time, I was on number six. Right. My retreat, and, and the last one I did was in Miami. And that's when we broke the Ciroc. We put it with breaking liquor too. You know, Diddy had gave, gave us these big ass bottles of Ciroc and passed them out to all the DJs and shit like that. So seven, I, I really didn't have nowhere to put it that was gonna do it. I said, man, I'm doing Dallas. I already did Houston, number four, I already did Houston already. I said, I'm doing Dallas. Everybody, you doing Dallas? I said, watch. Watch, nigga. And so I, I had the 100 black men hit me and all the different people hit me about tripping that I was doing it here. That's how I got the proclamation and all that shit here in Dallas, because I introduced the hip hop scene to the masses. The scene was here. Yeah. It just needed somebody to put that shit out and show people. Cause you know, like where we from, we did the boogie and shit, we went on that. Like, we were like, what the fuck is that? You know what I'm right. saying? Like niggas rubbing their head and, and you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, first, yeah, we were like, oh, <laughs> you know? We were like, you know, to, to, for, I'm, I'm from the Midwest. So we didn't, you know, unless you were, if you were doing house dancing in Chicago, we didn't see that kind of shit. You know what I'm saying? Like niggas dancing like that. Just like in, in New Orleans, when I brought DJ Jimmy to Milwaukee, niggas looking at me like I was crazy because them niggas was twerking. <laughs> 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 like, what the fuck is you doing? But I had took this record, uh, uh, hop in a circle, and I started playing it in Milwaukee. So we didn't really know the, what the dance is. Uh, we just knew it was some shit that sounded like the Yin Yang Twin. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. So all the bitches dance. Oh, fuck it, we gonna dance. I'm sorry, it's, it's one old, how many beats have been there? I'm playing it. That's how I met Akon. Same thing, playing belly dance on the radio. It was fast like that. But I didn't really classify them as this is this and this is this. I just knew it was something that girls could dance off of and that's what I played, you know what I'm saying? And so um, once I got uh, heard the Caprice music, I, I, I hooked up with, uh, I hooked up with George. George Lopez. And, Shout uh, out George. We were sitting in the, in the record store and this is when we had Big Tigger. We was really like real strong at BET, the core. So every time Big Tigger, Big Tigger was the first DJ in the core. Oh, okay. And so once he, he get on that microphone and say, Big Tigger doing big things, core DJs in the building, that shit went on for like four months until we started getting hated on and they started telling me he couldn't say that shit like every day. Because it, it was, it was like basically like a damn commercial for us, you know? So, but, so we, was, we have DJs going in and out that motherfucker every week. It was always a core DJ on them. So um, I called up there. I knew one of the producers and I said, hey man, y'all loading videos? I said, you got this record uh, by Tom Tom up there that somebody sent it to you? He goes through the shit, yeah, it's, a, it's Caprice music. I said, yeah, man, play that. Just like that. Man, I was sitting there, George, 40 minutes, George and him, that, that shit came on TV. <laughs> Fucked him up, man. From then on, like, George had his meetings and got that deal over there, Universal Republic, and that was 
Kill was really yeah. like that. You know what I'm saying? And the, and the, no, yeah, he got it. And then the boys with the I don't know what's the guy with the get it bitch. Y'all just had them on the trap show. stars. They trap got their deal. They was really the ones. Trap stars was really the ones that got the national deal. Right. Like the get it bitch that record. Yeah. That was really the first one that really opened the scene up like that after I did the conference here for, for Dallas. And then after that, it was uh, my Dougie and... Stanky Leg. Stanky and, Leg. And she, yeah, like after that, it was that. Why, why do you think a lot of the artists, um, it seemed like they didn't really get a shot beyond a single? Because they don't leave and go out of town and promote that shit. They don't be thinking they... they you know, they get so popular. A lot of artists get so popular at home, they don't want to leave home. They think they're Atlanta. Atlanta, there's no other city like Atlanta, man. Like, Tell us the difference. What's the difference? It's black. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Shit. There's no difference. There's no city like Atlanta, bro, when, when it comes to, well. DC, maybe? At that time. Oh, okay, okay. At that time. It's a little different in Atlanta now. Right. But at the time I'm talking about, it was no way, there, there's nobody that had a scene like Atlanta where there were so many people in one place that supported everybody, you know. And so Milwaukee, Dallas wasn't known as a music city. Houston was, you know what I'm saying? But then they only had their type of thing, this chop the screw thing and shit. I remember, I remember I was wrong. I was wrong about, I argued with screw about screw music. Wait, then. you knew screw? Hell yeah. Oh man. Yeah, yeah, that was good. That was hell yeah, good nigga, man. And I went over his house. I was down there with Jay one time and I went over his house because it was this all this thing about he had this all these artists I wanted to meet. He had Hawk, and Pat, and Hawk's little brother had Trey. I mean, he was young, mm -hmm. and he had all these niggas over there rapping slow as shit. I'm gonna come down and down and down. I'm from the, I'm up top. I'm like, man, what the fuck is this? Not I'm impressed like, at all. Like, nah, I'm like, I'm like, Scar he ain't facing them. You're I'm right. just a Scar face. I'm on, you know, what's up with that? I'm thinking I'm gonna hear that shit. He tell me to go over and meet this nigga. I said, Screw him. I go over there and we talk. I'm sitting there for hours with him. These niggas rapping. I'm gonna come down and down. I said, what the fuck is that? Right? He said, all right. He said, all right. What you doing Saturday? <laughs> he said, what you doing Saturday? I said, I'm gonna be here. I'm gonna still here. I'm gonna be here. What's happening? What you doing? He said, come by my house around about 12, 1 o'clock. Real slow, right? Yeah. I said, all right. Man, I pull up, nigga. I ain't never seen no shit like that in my life. <laughs> Bro, they was wrapped around like, he got ran in on a couple of times because they thought he was selling dope, he was selling tapes. Right. He got these motherfucking tape decks stacked up on top of each other, like running them, boom, <laughs> running them. $20 a pop, $50 VIP, nigga, every week. Then they got them damn spinners and shit on there. I, I, I'm nigga, I, I was out of my element. I didn't know what the fuck. He said, all right, you see this, right? It's going to be one one day. I'm like, I'm still I'm seeing it. But I think that was the only time I was doubting that shit. Like, I ain't, I ain't doubt nobody seen no more after that. Right. But when, he, when he showed me that, and then that still tipping came out across the country. That was crazy, man. Yeah, that was, it was it. That was it for me. And then I was hearing people, R&B records coming out with screwed up shit in their records. And Beyonce was coming out screwed up shit in their records. I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm tripping. <laughs> yeah, I was tripping. I was tripping. I was wrong as hell. You know what I'm saying? But, How often are you wrong? Uh, not it, a lot. Not a lot? Nah, not a lot. Especially after that shit, I'm a little bit more careful. Right. Before what? I make a decision like from one of my ears saying I had to go visit the region. I had to see something coming now because I was wrong as fuck with that one. So what is a song? Because I, I want to ask you like, uh, how do you find a hit? But before we get to that, like, what is a song that you heard and was like, this ain't it, but oh, was Laffy right. Taffy. Oh, okay. For sure. <laughs> I argue with, I argue with, uh, with motherfucking uh, Shorty about that. Another one. I was like, man, this is bullshit. Until I seen, until I felt myself doing the dance one day. Right. <laughs> I was sitting like this, I was going like this on the side. <laughs> I don't know, bro. That Fabo nigga, you, he's, he's Fabo set it off though yeah, because Fable. he he's so animated. And once he started doing it, and everybody seen it, yeah, and they had the ringtones out, then they had broke the record for the most ringtones. So like ringtone, I think that 
I think that that's one thing that they should have kept in the game is ringtones for real. For sure. Like, because you was getting one for one. Like, if it was a dollar, it was a dollar. You know. But I ain't gonna lie. Some niggas had them flagrant ass ringtones and they was ringing at the wrong time. They said, Don't uh, stop it, you know, all the church and shit. Pop that pussy, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they, hey, but you know, hey, that one was Cat and Style getting MP3s and Napster and all yeah, that. Yeah. So they started putting shit in their phone yeah. themselves. Once you start being able to upload, I think I still don't think they should have got away from it though. You saw every. I just I'm just really thinking about this. You really saw every yeah. stage of the rap game. We gotta understand. My my family was in music when I was coming up. I fought it because yeah. I wanted to be in the street, but they was in music. And I, you know, even with my cousin Jerry in the mood Atlanta, and I was like, man, f them niggas for no reason. I was hating. <laughs> <laughs> Not for no reason, bro. Like that was just on some nigga shit. Like man, somebody got to stay home. I'm trying to be that nigga, stay home. But I'm still in the damn street. I'm still in the street, you know, I'm still in the street doing shit, selling, you know, just doing a lot of shit, you know, still in the streets. Right. Yeah. And so I was hating, basically, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> and so, but, but then when I realized, somebody realized they saw something in me and I, I skipped all over that. I was started DJing in Chicago because yeah. I like to play house music, I like to like house music. But then I started, when I went to, when I went to Miami, it was like, okay, I'm gonna go back and forth from Milwaukee to Miami for a minute. You know what I'm saying? How, how different is it from being in the street shit from what you're doing right now? Um, you know what, man? I ain't gonna lie, bro. Like, I thought it was, I thought it was gonna be different because where I come from, if you say you're doing something, you do it. You know, we got, got niggas everywhere. Right, for sure. But. You know, you knew how to handle them, and they, a lot of them wasn't in your circle when y'all was handling business. You know what I'm saying? So, and I thought it was gonna be cool when I got in the music game. Oh, we in the music. I'm in the music business, and you know, mm. man, this shit worse than the motherfucking street. Because why you say that? Well, it's just a lot of it's a, there's a lot of cat, it's a lot of devious shit. A lot of niggas that do a lot of shit to get where they want to be. Right. Even cut, it's like more cutthroat. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of niggas want to be number one. I don't know nobody that don't get in the game right. not to be number one. No matter what genre you're doing, you want to be the number one freestyle nigga. You want to be the number one country singer. You want to be number one. You know, so I don't know nobody that gets in this motherfucker just right. decide. I'm going to be number three. Right. So I'm cool. I'm going to be three. So I want to I want to play out a couple different scenarios, rap scenarios, right? And I want you to give your thoughts on it, whether it's grimy or if it's just business. Okay. I'm an independent artist. Big name artist, T.I. Gucci Man, I do a song with him. I put the video out, the label don't clear it. Is that a grimy move or is that just business? Which label? Whatever label. I'm just, just whatever arbitrary label. I but I paid the nigga 15000 We do the song video. I market that shit. And then all of a sudden it come down. On the majors the, don't clear it. The majors, the, or that's what they're saying. That's what the artist is telling you. Oh, bro. Uh, well, you know? for, it's grimy if they don't tell you that's not going to get cleared. Like, I know, I know a lot of trap niggas that just was buying verses just because they wanted to have them, put them on my mixtapes and uh, live mixtapes and put the record out just to say they had got a record with a nigga. They didn't give a fuck if it got clear. But what the problem was, they stopped doing that because some of them records got hotter than the record that the label was trying to put out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so, but if, if an artist, a signed artist don't tell the artist that, hey man, you might not get this shit clear. If you might not get this shit clear, bro, that's grimy. If they tell them beforehand, hey, you give me this money, I'm gonna do the verse for you, but I, I don't know, you know what I'm saying? If it's gonna be clear or not, that's business. What about when an artist, um, I pay for a feature, and uh, you know, I pay good money, whatever, but I don't drop the song in a, a timely fashion, and then the, <laughs> the artist decides he wanna put that same verse on another song. Grimy? <laughs> <laughs> From the independent artist standpoint. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's grimy. That's bullshit. Nigga, I, you can't just have my verse floating around, nigga. <laughs> just, what the fuck you think? You know what I'm saying? Just, we did business on one record. Like, can, can, can you lease a verse? Is that a thing? Like, you gotta. <laughs> like, people be leasing beats, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So they lease. I never heard about Lisa Verse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like Lisa Verse, like damn, it show up on somebody's shit later on. Yeah. Unless it's a bigger artist and it fit the bigger artist, but more than likely, you put you if you do that and put it on a bigger artist, 
the person that you did the record, we're going to get the credit for it anyway. Because if they keep it, you're not going to get shit. All right. Now, is this grimy or just business? Mm -hmm. I, Tony Neal, buy a beat from Dion for $150. That buy bitch, a beat. A, a buy a beat. What's He's the just, definition of buy the beat? You mean I like, give the 150 and he gives me he the- He don't write no- No, exclusive. he just gives you a, no, he gives you a, a, a track. Okay. <laughs> you throw Gucci man and somebody on the bitch, that bitch go diamond. Uh -huh. Do you double back and give him money or do you just say it is what it is? You don't give him shit. <laughs> but see, the business gotta be done like, he gonna get his splits anyway. On the back end, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, but yeah. like if you, nah, nah, you bought, you, that's what it's bought for. 150. Yeah, 150, <laughs> nigga. You gotta get that, do the business, do the splits and shit. Nigga, one of these niggas gonna come pick his ass up for the beast, put him a production deal anyway. <laughs> shit. It's the truth, like, that's why, why niggas that's like. Panda was, did that nigga pay, uh, designer about that panda beat for $200. Yeah. And I just always like, he never did no more beats. He never did no more songs with the nigga. Yeah, so this, this, I was like, this confused so probably, me. Dude probably didn't want to do nothing else with him. He can all he got. He did actually. He did. Uh, I ain't got. Uh, what's the name of that record? He, I, he did another one that sounded like Panda on the album called. Uh, no, nah, uh, it's called. I ain't got nothing to do today or some shit like that. It's a. Uh, it's hard. Oh. But by the time they was getting ready to go put it out, he had did this shit with Kanye already. Right. So they didn't. He was kind of like. Niggas went on him like that. So by the time he wanted to drop that, it was, he should have came and dropped that right behind it. Like me, being the a &R, I'd have been like, bro, we ain't gonna stay on this Panda record all. Let's drop that I ain't got, I don't know what to do today. Uh, whatever the fuck the title was. Let's put that out now. That shit was hard as shit. I mean, as a matter of fact, it was harder than Panda. Bro, he got a couple songs way harder than Panda. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, 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 but I think that he caught flack so hard about the, the future shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. Instead of just staying focused and talking, he shouldn't have even talked about it. Because he would have came out, that, that one would have silenced all that shit. It's, and it's, I mean, it's, you got to put your, who you around, man, too. A lot of your people that you around be dick riding. Like, tell your nigga if he got some whack shit. Like, be for real. Don't, don't be that nigga, man. Just tell your nigga, man. But, but Tony, now, hold on, wait a minute, because I've been a victim of this. When you're in the studio uh -huh. with them big expensive speakers, that shit do hit a little different. Man. That. <laughs> man, fuck that. You mean, so you mean to tell me you've never heard a song in the man, moment and it sounded way different? That terrible loud is terrible quiet. Mm. <laughs> that's bullshit. I always listen to some shit in the car. That's when I know the if it's trash. It. That's when you know. The car is it, but, yeah. but in the studio, that shit. Oh, shit whack yeah. is whack, bro. Yeah, you know, it's so, whack is whack. So that brings me back to this. How do you know when you hear that hit? Like, what, what is it when you, what does that determine? Are you ready, to, are you ready to change the time? Yeah. Like as a DJ, uh, you always have to always be an A and R at some right. point. Are you ready to go out on a limb for some shit that everybody else ain't doing? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that's when you know. You know, you don't follow the Joneses. You either follow Joneses and everybody have records. It's easy to do that, but are you ready to are you ready to be that one? You know what I'm saying? Are you ready to be that one that uh <coughs> that uh is a record breaker. That's what it's about. Your right. record breaker. What's happening, fam? What's going on, y'all? Yeah, yeah, it's like, are you ready to be that record breaker? Are you ready to break records? Right, real shit. That's me. I mean, right. I'm, nigga, still to Dude, this can, day. Can you do? I'm, I'm a, I want to play this quote. I want to say this quote that you said that that hit me. I was like, um, you said the internet makes stars, DJs make legends. That's right. And what is the role of a DJ? You feel like they should be, because you know, in this day and age, it's a lot of payola niggas having to pay the DJ. Do you feel like DJ should only f with what they like or how should it be for the DJ I think artist? Some, I think, nigga, I think, I, nigga, you ain't got to get paid for everything. Right. I feel, that's how I feel. If you was a hit, man, and you a DJ, so you know why niggas, you know a lot of niggas want to get paid for it because they feel like they might, artists flip on you. Yeah. So if you go out on a limb, you getting paid for it, I'm going to get paid first. Fuck that because I don't know if I, I help break this. And then, uh, I'm, I'm going to tell, tell y'all a story, right. man. Let's talk. It happened with Bone, with me. You took my Bone. Yeah, that I, took that, I, I got that record for him at Def Jam. Mm. But I didn't, I didn't, I did it off my favorites. My, he's still my guy, my boy. I, I, it's just lesson learned for me. I just learn, you know. But, um, I, I got it done off my favorites instead of actually going in there and doing the paperwork, 
going up to the label. I let them niggas go. I said, here you go, here's Bone Boo. I hope y'all niggas do the right thing. Kind of shit. You know what I'm saying? But DJ Tuss is the one that told me about him. Mm-hmm. Bone was actually, I was going to this, this showcase here, and Bone was actually sitting outside and walked up to me and said, hey, hey, sir, how you doing, sir? And I said, what's happening? You know, I'll be like, you niggas be thinking I'm a little rough. You know what I'm saying? So what's happening? He said, uh, I, I, my name is Bone, and I have a record. Um, I said, oh, you talking about the homeboy record, the homegirl home girl record that they playing. They keep playing in there. They played this like five times since I've been in that motherfucker. I said, that's your record. I looked at him. He had the look and everything. I called my nigga at Def Jam. I called my boy City. I said, I mean, I got something for you. Simple. But I think what happened, I think we didn't let him do the leg work first. Like, I think he got a little arrogant. You know what I'm saying? And uh, Bone, you know, well, Bone, we had him in here not too long ago. He was like, his manager was mostly at fault for Cap. a lot of the. Cap. <laughs> Bone, you two for you owing two on the uh, yeah, jankiness. Yeah. You, you owe it two. I'm the one who put that record out. Now nah, you got to take the blame for that. <laughs> now, some of that shit, you got to take the blame. You know. <laughs> Bone, it's like, it's like for real, like my last one I did. Sometimes you just got to take the blame for it. Like, yeah. I, I got a record out right now called Throw It, biggest record in the club. Still. I put that out last year, February. The one where you don't need no beat, you better hype your bestie up. Yeah. That's my record. We put that shit out. He didn't want to do no interviews and shit. Couldn't get him to do no free shit. Came to move around. The more the record, more popular than him now. Like w- today, you like, nigga, you can't go to no club across the country without hearing that come on for girl birthday or some shit. Like, yeah, right now. At what point do you just get a nigga to, hey, just ra- go just rap this song <laughs> put it, put it right because you know a, a song gets so big that a will just scam and say, "Yeah, this us. We did. They don't come and perform your shit." That shit happened a lot. I seen some niggas. Do yeah, that. niggas do that. <laughs> I wanted to do it a couple of times. Some niggas. <laughs> bone crusher. I, I seen bone some, crusher got some niggas like that. I, I, I seen some, <laughs> hey, listen, I seen some niggas take a nigga shit and start performing it. They were the feature, yeah. but then they just started doing the record. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I've seen some niggas and lose because now they took the ownership of the motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? I ain't seen niggas do that. So, yeah. so one of the things I wanted to uh, talk about because it was interesting to me, right? You had a, a live where you kind of was explaining why Takashi he's doing he was doing all these numbers. He was kind of complaining about not going number one after doing so many millions of views on YouTube, mm-hmm. and you kind of explained, nigga, you ain't playing on the radio. So how does that, and then, and then he actually, y'all kind of had it back and forth, which was kind of interesting, but, so let's talk about. Takashi set me up. Okay. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, for real, I, I, I liked him in the beginning. I liked, I liked him. Right. Like, what is the wild nigga in New York running around? You know what I'm saying? I, I liked him in the beginning, but then when, a, when he started with certain niggas that I with, right. and, and, you know, all that playing, I don't, you know, nah, we don't, I don't do that. I don't play like that. Whereas if I like your antics and I like your look and. Yo, music, you know, with a wild jumping around in New York and shit. Right. I said, I don't, you know, certain niggas you playing with, I don't, you know, I don't do that. And so I kind of got up off of him. So when he went to jail, uh, and then he came back out with this, with this record, and I said, I basically I was like, hey, you know, congratulations, nigga, uh, on telling, for one. Um, I said, two, that shit nigga, you you at the time it was uh it was uh Ariana Grande and uh, Ariana Grande and and what's the little the little singer out of Canada? What's no oh, never mind. Uh, just no, nah, not just. Uh, I'm about to say singer, Justin, like, Justin Bieber. Oh, yeah. Justin Bieber. Yeah. They had a record together. Okay. And it's, you know that's radio. They selling bundles and all kind of shit. I'm like, man, I didn't. I wasn't trying to say it to be funny, but I just I do radio. I said, with all the excitement and all the hype and all the streams and all the videos, and you got these two million people watching, those people don't buy music. You can have everybody, it's more of niggas that watch your shit for free that's buying your shit. That's what we're going through right now, case in point with this shit, with Atlantic Records and shit. Like, they'll get to that. But, yep, yep. but <clears throat> you, they, they trusted that the viral shit would make more money than actual, actual hands touching. You know, one for ones, and we got away from that with hip hop. We, we, you know, we, you know, stuff that was tangible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We ain't had nothing tangible. 
how you gonna sell something in the air? Right. Like streams is and TikTok, you can't sell that. <laughs> okay, then, so let, let me let me add then a, once it, hold on, but then once it yeah. get crowded, yeah, with a bunch of motherfuckers doing it, right? But look, but oversaturated. How you gonna make something out of something that's oversaturated? But can you give me the difference, right? Because two hundred fifty million YouTube views. It's got to be some type of crazy money, I would imagine. What's the difference between that versus a number one record? Like, what's the money difference? Your shows, your notoriety, you know, you know, the places that you get to open and do concerts, this shit like that. And if, you, if you're in some kind of deal where the label gets some of that, that's what a number one record do. Number one gets you on. Have you seen any nigga that go viral win a Grammy yet? No. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, do we give a about a Grammy or not? Like, dude, that's that's another thing. Dude, we should. We well, should. Niggas, niggas that say they don't give a fuck about a Grammy, they, they like never it. had a Grammy. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, that's stupid. Because you know, we just we just had the the, the number one debate. Yeah. Like, is the money not enough? Like, being comfortable is like you get a hundred, a couple I'm, of million. I'm, I'm gonna say this. I'm comfortable. I'm yeah. Not, I'm not. I never wanted to be Khaled, and that's my guy. I never wanted to be drama. They're my people, but I'm comfortable where I'm at. Right. I'm I'm comfortable taking the elevator. I'm t- taking the stairs instead of the elevator. Right. And I'm co- I'm comfortable staying on a certain, getting off on a certain floor. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm cool with that. Because it's like because let me tell you something. Once you start entering these other floors, <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> no, nah, there's other shit nah. going on in these floors that you might not want to be fucking but, with. Like that because oh, that's what you because you just said it earlier. No. Was I like I'm okay with being number three, but shit, number three you get to live a certain life. But number one, nigga, everybody that's number, number three one. ain't gonna tell you they number three. They gonna say they number one. Yeah, you feel me? Like I ain't gonna say I'm number three because number three is a long way from ten. So you gonna say you number one even if you number three. Right. You should always have an attitude like being I want to be number one. You feel me? Right. But if you realistically know, I ain't ready for that. Right. I'm gonna be number one where I'm at. Right. You know, like you know. Um, I, y'all ever seen the Black Godfather? Yes. So, a lot of people pattern me to Clarence, but I I never knew that until I watched the movie because I met him. I I went around him. I didn't get none of this shit that them niggas was talking about. They got with it. You know, from the shit that he did for people, that was amazing. You know what I'm saying? And I, uh, but. If you're talking about relationships, I think I got pretty good relationships with people. You know what I'm saying? I, I think I can make a few calls to people that can't make yeah. and make shit shake. I think I can get certain artists and radio stations that they can't normally go to. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, without somebody calling them and saying it. Like, you know, I think I can call a lot of people and make some shit move for people that they ain't never did it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Some people, a lot of people ain't ready for it, though, man. A lot okay. of people say they ready for that <laughs> shit, but they don't be ready, bro. And, and a lot of people act like they don't need no money. How do you act like you don't need money when you say you want to be, when you compare yourself to people, I'm better than this person, I'm better than this person, but you ain't got no fucking money. How you going to say that? I'm, I, I have a question. I was having a, a discussion with an individual because mm. uh, I was talking about look versus your, your perception versus what you actually are. So we have, uh, there are artists that have a bunch of money. Mm-hmm. They look like a bunch of money. But they, they, uh, music ain't where they are. BMF. You, correct. Yeah, I was, so, working, I was working with them. How do you, how do you control, control that perception? Like, say, bro, everybody knows you that song ain't if, hitting. If, if, bro, if somebody don't, <laughs> if, if you can't, you can't give somebody an artist that's a hot artist they don't want. It. Right. A lot, a lot of niggas with a lot of money got their own way of what they, how they want to do it. Those are the worst niggas to work for as the niggas that got money already because they right. already got a plan. Even when they ask you for help, they're going to try to tell you what they want to do. How the fuck are you going to tell me to come work with you and then tell me, nah, we're going to do it this way? What the fuck are you calling me for? Right. So they, that's, that's, they are already there. They got money. They're going to buy it up, make the look. You know what I'm saying? But that should be trash. And a lot of that shit. Then you got the, the starving artist that got all the good music, all the talent. Mm-hmm. Not he one got dollar. money. I had, got, I had did a video niggas got mad. At least stay getting mad at me about something, bro. I said, hey, why don't you broke niggas get with the rich? And get together and build a label. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I said, I be just saying shit every once in a while because I be feeling like I be in the car. I just <laughs> <laughs> make it easier for a nigga that can promote your shit because right. stop acting like you don't need no money. Because the only niggas that complain about shit and say 
about payola and all this is broke niggas. Right. That's a broke niggas excuse. I don't even know what the extent of payola is. Right. Nigga, you ain't, that's not payola when you in a f- club and a nigga asks for some money. <laughs> Services rendered. I, I, hate that, I hate that they even taught niggas certain words. Like, right. <laughs> that's not payola. Yeah. If a DJ say, nigga, buy me a drink or give me some money, or it's going to be $50 to play it. Nigga, that's what it is. That's not payola. You be running it online and dirty up a name. For fifty dollars, but they give you five thousand dollars worth of a headache. <laughs> and that, that's just that's not the right terminology. A lot of people use the wrong terminology and shit, bro. Like just to say it. Yeah. You got niggas that ain't been outside their city screaming payola. What the f- is you talking about, man? Nigga, what are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? Like you ain't been nowhere. You ain't even stopped. Some people don't know they might be bigger than like Duro. The road record didn't break here. That shit broke in L.A. That shit broke in L.A. with them Spanish and Mexicans. Hell yeah. yeah. What's the name of the record? Ice, Ice cream, cream paint cream. job. <laughs> <laughs> God, <don't just> let... <clears throat> That's how that ended up in L.A. like that because yeah. he, 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 he caught over there. I mean, there's a lot of people in the records that caught in another city. That don't mean you talk shit about your city. That don't mean you. <laughs> that don't mean you down your city because yeah, right. the record took off somewhere else. Right. Don't should, do that. Shouldn't do that. Give us, give us like three mistakes niggas make in this rap in this rap industry. Not staying humble. That's the one. Okay. That's the first one. That's I the agree. First one. Uh, not knowing, not doing the business part, the paperwork, the background, especially when your record take off too fast. A lot of niggas record take off so fast they be wanting the accolades of the record. Nigga, you can do the background work with that record still going. You don't have to, you know. And uh, third one, relationships. Mm-hmm. Make sure you got somebody that can f- with you, hang with you while you're doing this shit. And that go for women too. At that, that's that's for me. That's the three biggest ones: your family and your relationships and shit. Cause those will be the first one to show you they when you your family. Now I've always wondered. You hear we see a lot of like comments online um, about this this the snitch stigma. If you're a snitch, but does that really hurt numbers being a snitch? <laughs> Nowadays, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> oh, man. we was coming up. That shit was not tolerated. Right, but it was happening. It just wasn't on the internet. See, what motherfuckers try to act like is y'all knew nigga. Nah, nigga, it's just internet. You right, niggas was telling back then too. <laughs> yeah, like y'all niggas was telling. Right with a nigga telling. And there's just the internet puts a just the internet, man. You got right. so many blog sites and 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 be social media that don't nothing stay quiet, but like so Do you think the internet destroyed hip hop? I think niggas not keeping up with the time <laughs> destroyed hip hop. Mm-hmm. I think niggas not staying with the times destroy hip hop. I think niggas complaining and crap and and bumping heads over old nigga, new nigga, old yeah. head, young nigga. You know, uh, I think those names destroy hip hop. I think like that. Right. And I don't, I don't even think it's destroyed. I just think it's tarnished this shit a lot. Right. Niggas crack cl- sensitivity. Yeah. Niggas being too sensitive about. Online addressing shit that we wouldn't back in the day we wouldn't normally address. When the gave a nigga, you ain't gonna come see me. And what the fuck is you talking about? Like paying attention to shit that you didn't have to pay. Like a lot of people growing up sensitive. Right. A lot of cats just growing up way too sensitive, man. And uh, I think that's one of the things that put a damper on urban music, not just hip hop. Yeah, it's crazy, man. Cause like now you look and like you said, you'll see like YSL Woody. Mm-hmm. Then told, but he's so funny that everybody just aligns with the money piece of it and not the integrity piece of it. So we're in this weird state where we know how to win. Everybody's independent. Everybody's got their own channel. Everybody's a celebrity in their own right. Mm-hmm. And they're if you funny, if you got some motion, nigga, we gonna rock with the nigga that got the motion, not the nigga that got integrity per se. <clears throat> So like even when you was going, when it was you versus Takashi, did you experience any backlash from niggas that you wouldn't have normally experienced it from? Like, I'm gonna tell you something though, I never seen 
that many motherfuckers try to attack me at one time. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that shit was mm-hmm. fucking crazy. I, I think I spent two days blocking niggas. It feel good to block a nigga too. Nah, nah, it was irritating <laughs> because they was following me, they was making fake accounts with little niggas in Czechoslovakia and shit hit me, saying <laughs> shit. I ain't know what the fuck they were saying. I was just blocking them. I, I knew it was some derogatory <laughs> shit. Niggas trying to go live with me and shit. <laughs> they were mad, bro. They were mad at my ass, bro. Because what happened, so the whole story is because. Did it turn you up though? I Yeah, because I got <laughs> verified right after that. <laughs> <laughs> hey. I never knew how to get verified on nothing. Never, you know, bro. So, that shit, so you won't go with a blue check? My sister was talking to me. She said, oh, you verified. I said, verified on what? I already had Twitter. Yeah. She said, no, Instagram. I go look and it was verified. This was the <laughs> nigga that was arguing with Takashi. Like, that on that shit. It was verified. When I woke up, like, God damn. And my Facebook page. Right, yeah. Yeah. So that was kind of the introduction. <laughs> I want to say it. <laughs> it was kind of the introduction of me to kids like 14, 15, so, you know, yeah. right. in, in a sense, you know what I'm saying? Right. Because yeah. they started realizing, well, wait a minute, this motherfucker have really been in the industry because, you know, kids going to research it. Yeah. yeah, that's one thing the kids going to do. They going to research They going to research some so shit. So they bro. started looking like, hold on. Wait now. a minute now. <laughs> you might that, be the club. that first single didn't go number one. <laughs> after they got, after they start, you know, and they, but their fan base is fickle. So they don't hang with them niggas long. Yeah. So, they go back and research the niggas that they was dissing after they off the nigga. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so they, all right, I'm gonna fuck with Tony Neal. He don't like him. It's yeah. like yeah. the fan base, the internet fan base of people are not loyal. Yeah. They make fake pay. They're not loyal. They're not, they not loyal. And I think that the industry paid too much, gave that shit too much credit. That's why we're in a situation. Like they gave it too much credit. You know what I'm saying? Because Anything that's not tangible that we can't hold in our hand is not gonna sell, bro. It's not just not gonna. It's not gonna stay no time. It's too easy to go the next direction, go the right way. If you holding something in your hand, it's yours. Yeah. If it's a CD, it's yours. If some wax, it's yours. The MP3 is everybody's. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay, yeah. You know so. So. You know, uh, you're about to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. Uh, yeah, Black Radio. Black Hall of Radio. Radio. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! yeah. How does that feel? I mean, I, you know what I always say? I love it. I appreciate it. But once I hang the plaque on the wall, it's old. Right. That's me. You ain't like gonna ride I, around with that bitch for a little bit? Nah, nah. I hang it up on the wall, take it out the packet, take pictures with it, smile on social media. <laughs> yeah. And then when I hang it up, it's old. Because it's up there with the rest of them now. Because you still work. It's time to do something else. Yeah. So this right here, though, is <clears throat> because I'm still so active. I, I, I appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I'm really active, active. Right. And usually they get them kind of words even you through. Yeah. Or when you, you know, almost <clears throat> through, almost yeah. out of there. You know, so yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm thankful. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm, thank, I'm thankful that people older than me and in my uh, uh, took the time, nominated mm-hmm. me for something like that. I guess they felt like what I did with the core and stuff like that was viable for something like that. So I'm, I'm thankful for that. Yeah, that's why. But I'm still working. I got shit, nigga. I'm still, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I got label, my culture label, the convict label. You know what I'm saying? I, my station on live, on lit live. I got on my own radio station on on, on lit. It used to be Dash. Yeah. Got my own, and I, I'm still, you know, working. But I and I do Ricky Smiley in the mornings. You know, like yeah. For me, I'm I'm just active, bro. I'm just staying. I'm just active. You stay healthy, stay active. If you can stay healthy, stay active. So who who is your Mount Rushmore when it comes to the Hall of Fame, DJs. DJs? Yeah. Oh man, that's so cool. Probably niggas from the crib, but I'm gonna say Red Alert. Damn. Uh, <clears throat> outside of my hometown. Don't matter, it's your personal. DJ all. Luke. Damn. Yeah. Um, man, why Luke do H-Town like that though, bro? He ain't doing like nothing man, to business. He could've he gave them just, niggas, see, 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 niggas see, $50. That's, that's <laughs> <laughs> see, that's personal, right there, see? When you say, they could have gave. That's personal. Oh, okay. okay. Them, wor- <laughs> them words don't go in business nowhere. Man, man they could have. That right there is already. I, you already up when you say that. Like I, I, I man, I. No, it fucked me up to know that he. That I did not know that, bro. I watched the whole document. It was like but, a made a documentary at the crib. He, I was like, like Luke had H. Okay, fucked my head up. Let's say this: you, you learn from who you taught. 
Yeah, teaching. yeah, that's facts. If I'm gonna say this, the business, if you ain't learned to fuck nobody over, you're not gonna fuck nobody over. That's facts. But when you get taught that the first deal is the baddest deal, yeah. and you the nigga doing the bad deal. <laughs> I'm trying. I got my little artist, my artist, uh, my boy Shaquille, uh, Problem Child. I'm trying. I, I'm not. I'm not because I know I'm not going to him over. You know what I'm saying? I, I got I got plans I want to do with him. But one thing I don't want to do is him over. You know, now what happens is cats want to sign something so fast and get signed and get all this money. Then when the money gone, you forgot what you signed. That's a fact. And niggas don't let you out of it. So they start saying. Yo, no, nah, nigga, you you signed that. Right. You signed that. You signed that, nigga. You signed that. I see so many people y'all be having on this motherfucking couch, bro. I be just like, nigga. Nah, give me one. You gotta give me one now, bro. I be just looking like nigga. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you gotta give it to me. <laughs> Who was it? Nigga should be suspect. I be like, mm. <laughs> I, I gotta be looking at the TV like, nigga, gonna get on there and say that, dog. <laughs> One nigga said a nigga had to die for them to get out the video. Who was it? The Flex, uh, the Party Boys. Yeah, a nigga had to die. Them niggas came up to their school in a in a tour bus with their face on their bitch. I see. That's I don't know. They might be out the deal, but I don't know where the masters and the publishing at. See, you just a whole lot of shit out the deal. You out the deal? Yeah, you gone. But I got this. I still own this publishing and the master. <laughs> <laughs> you out the deal. You go ahead. <laughs> Ain't no more deal, nigga. You, I got this, though. <laughs> what? You out the deal. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You be out the deal, nigga. Yeah, you know, before... I'm going to wait one second to answer that. Ask that. Is the radio still important? Facts. I think what I just tell you. Who's, who viral that got a Grammy? Oh, shit, man. Wait, okay. Is it true that in order to get a number one, you have to pay for it? So is it... Let me say this. Not, see, see, not pay for it, do promotion for it. Can an independent artist become number one? Facts. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Has it ever happened? Hell yeah. Who? Um, he was independent. Oh, you talking about? You want to talk about like, like just an independent nigga uploading shit, shit on Tune Corp? Uh, uh, tag team. Um, yeah. there's a bunch of motherfuckers that was independent. That went number one. So how much money did them? Wild make? thing. How much money did them go through records like Wild Thing was independent? Yeah, nigga. How much money did them niggas make? Oh, uh, see, they was one for one. They were selling albums, nigga. <laughs> it was albums, yeah. nigga. Nine dollars <laughs> an album. <laughs> <laughs> you you tell me. <laughs> you tell me. And see, that's that's what the crazy shit. How you gonna charge that kind of show money when you ain't got nothing tangible? Off of popularity online. Now you got some niggas, man. I'm it's some niggas that I'm impressed because I watch, you know, Travis Scott is a motherfucker, man. For sure. He is he once you get to the once you get to the the status like a uh, Kendrick, these motherfuckers is like you got a cult. That's what it is. Once you get this cult following like Kanye. Yeah. It's almost like you can't do no wrong. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Did y'all see that shit with Travis Scott? Mm-hmm. That shit was crazy, man. Three that concert. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Three no, not the concert. Not that one. Was the, yeah, you see how many motherfuckers were at that concert, man? He sold out Egypt. Oh. He sold out that Egypt. That shit was crazy, man. So that's once you get to those kind of, you know that over here, Akon, let me get Akon. Over here, you got to do certain stuff that you ain't got to do over there. You got to take certain percentages of something that you know you ain't got to do over there. Khan is the type of nigga, he ain't going to do it. He don't care where it's at if he ain't going to get his money. He'd rather do it for free. Yeah. Khan, a nigga that walk up in the strip club, you'd be like, is that a Khan in this motherfucker? He that kind of nigga, like, he'll just show up. <laughs> that nigga by himself. <laughs> yeah, he, that, he, that's, that's him. Like, he the... He might be the realest pop artist. Damn. I mean, considering what we call real nigga. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 That's yeah, him. Yeah. You know, Flo Rida too. Flo Rida like that too. Man, they don't give Flo Rida they Flo Rida his credit, bro. Oh, shit, y'all, what y'all think, man? Why are you saying that? No, y'all didn't hear it here. <laughs> Why you uh -huh. saying that? 
No. Who no, I saw that his credit. No, 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 no. Who? N- uh, niggas in the street. Man, I'm not. Li- ho- look, listen to me. I argued it down. I, and it might so, just so, be. So, my, so, uh, so, well, so, so, I, I, so I let me say this. So if a nigga don't go to jail. Facts. That's ain't no real nigga. Like yeah, for, bro, bro. I said a nigga said no. Nah, ain't nobody bumping Flo Rida. I said nigga, have you ever been to a Vegas pool party nigga, at Flo Rida? Come on, and man, then titties start man, popping out. Make sure, make sure <laughs> hey nigga, just make sure that, that you talk to been past Colleen. for sure. <laughs> okay, just make sure that nigga ain't just been out, out of the city. Don't argue with no nigga that ain't travel, bro. You never, have, you never right. I'm gonna tell anybody, don't argue with no nigga that ain't travel. You absolutely about right. music. I done, I done seen that flow rider come up. Man, man. don't argue with no nigga about like people this ice spice and shit with young girl. But don't argue with that that ain't never went and seen what them little young girls do when that girl come on. Yeah. Like man, you shouldn't be arguing with no nigga in their 40s about ice spice anyway. For sure. <laughs> Why are you talking to me about ice spice, nigga? Why is a 30 talking about talking about ice spice? <laughs> see, see. It's a <laughs> his hip hop creates a uh, hip hop creates an area where you don't think you don't supposed to be there. But a lot of niggas y'all not supposed to be talking about that. You forty five and three fifty nigga. But because you don't go be dissing down there. Like yeah. what are you talking about, man? Why is you man that girl Bro, Ice Spice whack? Nigga, why are you talking about I'm, Ice man, Spice? Hold on, hold on. <laughs> why are you saying I'm, that? You I mean, antique ass nigga, why you saying that? Bro, hold on, hold on. Bro, I'm glad I'm glad we here. I'm glad we here. Now for real, like, come on now. I, Shut the fuck up. Why you saying that, bro? Why is your old ass talking about this? So, look, look, look. What you talking about, bro? Why? I, I'm, I know because I'm in the music business. Yeah. But if a nigga, man, shut your ass up, bro. Why is you talking about Ice Spice, nigga? Why your nigga? I was arguing. You got gray hair. You shouldn't be talking about Ice Spice at all. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nothing, bro. I'm telling you, y'all get a nigga up here, man, and he talking about man, shut the man, f- man, up, man. I was arguing with a nigga about six and red, oh, right? Man, Did, man shut was, the fuck up, bro. Bro, they said that her lyrics, right? I was like, you niggas used to listen to "Hi, My Name Is." That was y'all niggas' shit. Y'all niggas. Well, <laughs> nigga. Nah, nah, nah. nah. Um, <laughs> Nigga, what? Nah. I'm a, the wild shit she I'm say? A, I'm going to play. I'm going oh, uh, I'm I'm, I'm to stand down on that because like, I'm going to say 45. But. Oh, 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 okay. but I'm glad you hit it. <laughs> I'm glad you hit it. But. Uh, is Eminem, is Eminem the face of him? <laughs> Eminem is one of the best. Is, is he the best? I thought so at one time. Man. I thought so. Don't be biased. Don't be doing the white shit. You know that, huh? and, I'm, and I can't. Then I can't. No, 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 no. no, no. It's not about white. white. I don't want to be on that because I'm from Detroit. No, no, too, no, 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 no. What I'm, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, lyrically, and the way he put his shit together, and the amount of music that he sold. Yeah, him and Wayne, nigga. It was like this at one time, back and forth, back and forth, one, 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 yeah. one, back and forth. Yeah, for sure. Wayne changed. If you changed the game. You was number one at one time. If you For ever sure. had to take Jay Z, Nas, if you ever, your impact changed the game. Yeah. Nelly, if your yeah. impact changed the game. Flow Rider, Akon, if your, if your impact changed the game, at one, at one point you was number one. T.I., nigga, if your mm-hmm. impact changed the game, ludicrous. Yeah. You gotta understand these busters, these are people that change shit, mm-hmm. shift this shit. Don't you, Jesus? Come now, they, for sure. Gucci had to be one of the coldest businessmen on the low. Oh, boy. He had all them niggas like this. He had all them niggas. Thug and all of them. Migos, he had all them niggas. Sign. Walker, he had all them niggas. <laughs> when, when y'all don't know, like you know I'm talking about them and people ain't successful with our nigga, niggas had successful artists. Meek Mill, Ross, man. I, I I put Ross in the top five. For sure. Oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah. See, we begin, we begin too personal, bro. Like mm-hmm. with watching a nigga's life play out on the internet mm-hmm. and, and make you um blind to the accomplishments of, and the way they shifted the culture 
shift the music, shift the shit. It was hard to take that from Diddy to have what happened because he shifted the culture. It was hard to see that because this shifted the culture. You know what I'm saying? Like nobody, ain't nobody shift the culture in hip hop like this nigga. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, niggas want to vote. He shifted, <laughs> nigga, he shifted the culture. He shifted sure. this motherfucker. Like at one time, this nigga could do no wrong. Like you saw that nigga, it was the, man, I don't give a fuck who that nigga, I don't give a fuck about none of that. You watch this nigga shift the culture. You know, mm. nigga shift, you got J Prince. These niggas mm. shifted the way people think about music. P, you know what I'm saying? Like, sure. yeah, uh, you got, so these people, that's what you do. You start talking about the business part, you know what mm. I'm saying? And that's where I be at with it. I don't be listening. I'm gonna be here to argue about no motherfucking ice spice, but he's so ass at him. <laughs> like, I don't, man, I've been around this shit for so long in different scales before I even started the core. I started the core in 05. And so before I started the core, I had been, been around this shit like Midwest DJ of the Year. I had been around this shit watching shit move and, in the background, helping and seeing, watching how putting putting pieces in the puzzle to help shit shape shift. Like so, when you ain't been in that position, man, man, shut the fuck up, man. If you ain't been in a position where you can make some shit move, even Charleston, like he's he's misunderstood, mm-hmm. but he making shit move. Yes, yeah, sure. He's shifting the way niggas are thinking. Right. First they're like, ah, oh, this nigga hating that nigga, then then now they looking at this nigga like. Hmm. He said some real shit. You knew you used to get that. Mm-hmm. Rat this, rat now. It's like, damn, that motherfucker said some real shit, though. Oh, that guy saying some real shit. You said some real shit back then. Are we responsible for <laughs> what we put out and play? Yeah. Right, we are. Mm-hmm. But if, but if you're a product of that, if you're a product of that shit, that's that's really all you know how to put out. For sure. Until you learn better. You know, you're a product of your environment. Speaking of shifting this shit, uh, you're an A&R. Mm-hmm. Um, what made you want to get into that? What made you want to do shit, that? I had an ear for music. Just, I like music, no matter what it is. I like hearing. I like. I watch what's going on around me, the times, and I hear something that I know that'll work with what's going on right now futuristically. You know what I'm saying? Or right. something that's coming back. Maybe you was too early. You know what I'm saying? Maybe your shit was just too early. Will this work coming back? I got a record that we put out in 02. I was going to drop an R&B record. That's crazy. We, we were just early. But that motherfucker, I let y'all hear it. Y'all going to be like, God damn, we was just early. It's on Long the Stepping Lines called, a record called Groove With You, man. And it was, we never had that damn record mixed or nothing. We just put it out there. And that shit was moving, moving, moving. We got jumped on syndication. And it never, it never stopped playing in the clubs. Right now to the day in the grown spot, it never stopped. So we like, shit, we're gonna put it out the right way. It never been on platform. Like right now, it ain't on no platform. So we never put it out on nothing. So if I feel like, if I feel like it's a hit, a hit is a hit to me. I don't give a fuck how old it is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A hit is a hit. Ken Folk Thug's record is almost 9.7 billion on TikTok. And that shit came out in 08. So a hit is a hit, you know, to me. So that's what made me start getting into yeah. A&R shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, with Akon, is because he called me one day and asked me to tell him, tell me about a record. I was on the phone with him. He said, man, tell me how you like this record. It was Kobe Adonis. In the first 30 seconds, I said, that's a hit. Yeah. And he said, damn, nigga, you need to be an A&R. You just hit it like that. And it was number one. <laughs> that's a hit. Uh, uh, um, Beat King, Beat King. Uh, R.P. Beat King. Yeah, Crush and Hammer. Yeah. I sat at the desk with George at the radio station. We first got the job here at K104 after Skip was, got, was out of there. And uh, he wanted to break a record, but he didn't have no records that he felt that was uh, breakable to him anyway. You know what I'm saying? And so he, he called me and DJ ASAP in the office. And we were sitting there listening to these records and he played that damn hammer. And I said, who the fuck is this shit hard? Who the fuck is this? He said, well, I said, where the f- nigga from me from here? I said, there you go. He said, nah, he's from Houston. I said, what? 
I said, oh man, that's it. That's y'all. All right. They turned, they played the crush for me. I said, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it fit right in what's going on here. Yeah. That's why niggas thought he was from Dallas at first. Right, hey. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm, 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 hey man, y'all ain't gonna get it. Y'all, I know y'all looking bewildered, but y'all gonna get a lot of real stories from me. Anyway, a lot of questions I ain't gonna answer. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. So y'all, like, you know, you might want to get into some other shit with me because I'm, you know, I, I'm, you know. Nah, this I, is what they people is. The history is, is that I've been around for a lot of this shit that's happening. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Good and bad. I've been around for a lot of this shit. You know what I'm saying? So, um, do you believe in building artists? Is that still a thing? Yeah, I'm doing it with this young dude. I'm a young boy, I just said, hell yeah. Artist development is what's missing. Definitely what's missing. For sure, but internet make you not patient for it. Right. You watching all these niggas bypass you on the internet, so you're not patient for the developing part. Right. You want to get on so bad because you just seen this sitting with you. Now, the internet that made him this, but really, he ain't developed, you know what I'm saying? And so in a few minutes, then they're going to be back down there with you or not because you're going to be doing the development. You're going you're gonna to see the nigga going back down. That's really the nigga that's going to be hating on you. When you going that way and that nigga on his way back down fast, yeah. Yeah. that's the nigga you had the issue with right there. Yeah. Yeah. So let me ask you this, man. Uh, what, what are the ways that you find new music? Listening to my kids mm. or uh, in a club or... Who's the newest artist that just impressed you? That impressed me? Yeah, that made you say, damn. Damn. You know what? She cost money, don't Nah. You know, you know, <laughs> you know, you know, who, you know I'm, I'm, I'm kind of awkward. You know who? Who? Central C. Bro, you know so fucked up? Mm-hmm. I ain't gonna lie. I actually, I, I was hating on a for no reason, See? bro. And then, I, and then I actually listened to him. I said, you I was hate. hard as fuck. If it's some odd to you, you're going to be like, man, that's a bullshit. Yeah. But then, yeah, so, I just, so, I, so, I just, so. just, nigga, uh, London ass nigga, man. Yeah, Central C. Man, he had it by a sneaky skin. Yeah. <laughs> I don't speak that way. Yeah. 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 <laughs> hey, listen, you got to understand. Nah, he's hard. You selected. I didn't See, know. Select uh, the nigga. Oh, the niggas over there was too early. Yeah, definitely. They was too early with that. UK drill and Drake took it. Yeah. <laughs> that nigga gonna take it, boy. <laughs> he gonna take some shit. He gonna take some shit, boy. And so he they really didn't get a chance to, you know, come out with that shit. You feel me? Like like that. But yeah. Yeah, that shit, yeah, that I, him, um, and then we get a lot of recurrence, so it's like um I ain't gonna lie. Southside Vic, bro, like uh, on that on the radar shit. I actually listened to what he was saying. I was like, yeah. "Holy shit!" That said, that bitch called me cocky. She actually projected. I'm out of my body. I'm astro projecting. I was like, Ooh. I was like what? And they like, said, "My body's still I, I like, in Texas." My mama. I'm gonna tell y'all, I like, <laughs> my mama's like, in Bali. I like. I like four back before he got signed. <laughs> I like him before he got signed. Of course. Who? Four bets. Before, four bets. Before he got signed. Four bets. Yeah. I'm BC. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but he just got signed, though. Yeah, but I like, <laughs> like two I, yeah, weeks ago. Like, Sometimes you get signed just to be right. dumbed down. Yeah, 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 yeah. You feel me sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I, I, like, I like what I heard from him. Yeah. There's a couple of cats that be like, I see um, like a couple of girls. I, hey, man, I, I put these girls on my Instagram named uh, Brittany and Bonnie, these, these rap girls. They said they've been doing it for a while. But I, I got ran across a video and I posted them on my Instagram. I said, these girls hard the motherfucker. Just recently, like a couple of days ago, <clears throat> and everybody been hitting me about them. That's they crazy. twins. That's hard. Man, they hard as shit. They rapping in the car and shit. And it's like, I be look, I used to be looking for shit like that. Right. All these little cats <clears throat> out of Cincinnati. I forgot their name too. So um, I just be looking for shit, man. Like yeah. I, I be I, looking for shit that goes hard, bro. Like yeah, I just like, be wanting like. I be looking like, for something that's gonna have a future. Yeah. And it's hard for me, it's hard. To just pull out some niggas because I don't see them futuristic. Right. Yeah. They hard for right now type. Yeah. Like, and so it's impressive. It's enough for me to put in a mix show. Right. You know what I'm saying? But I be on the AR side, I'll be looking at something that's gonna last for a right. long time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, this girl that we got, Georgia Rain, on convict, she crazy. Um, all ours, we look for people that's gonna like stick around for a minute, got their own thing, a right. mirror. We, we look for people like that, like that's gonna stick out. This, this artist, these boys ain't sheesh. Like, I look for stuff like 
that's going to be out. Right. For, you know what I'm saying? Right. So, so that's what I look for. So now, man, we got it. So we can make long money with. We got 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 to make long money, bro. Like, yeah, yeah. Now, I, I gotta ask this question, bro, because you're in the industry. Why do people? Why are people ganging up on Drake? What What is really going on, bro? It really. I think like, that. Hey, I think <laughs> the indiv- that should have been indiv- individualized beef. I think that Drake that had a 15, 16 year old run, and I think they just was hating to see somebody that was, that could get him off his square for a minute. But I ain't gonna lie, bro. They. I'm hearing that this nigga's like back dawn trying to hit everybody girl. They said that nigga hit the, the nigga from like Squares that. girl. That's been like that. That ain't new. Huh? <laughs> that ain't new. Oh. Drake been fucking. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, like, that's new. That's so, new. but is that, but is that enough to just be this hateful? No, it's not that. Oh, oh, oh you said that ain't no, it. No, it's not oh, that. Okay, niggas okay. just, you know how niggas, you trying to force to be tired of a nigga. You know what I'm saying? And it's, the pre- the uh, the Brady syndrome, like yeah, nigga that man, got six like, Super Bowls, like come on, bro. Drake hard, still. Yeah, for sh- but I think that 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 thing with Kendrick being the underdog to him, yeah. And when he said, "You don't make no record that niggas dance off of," yeah, bro. That right there was the the <laughs> catalyst. <laughs> this must have been he had this shit forever. <laughs> oh, for real? Yeah. He had that motherfucker beat forever. And it was like he was just sitting on it. <clears throat> it was like he had made the shit and had it sitting. It was like it was so orchestrated. Like the whole shit was just so planned out. I didn't know he was that sick, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you. Like, I knew he was cold, bro, but with them little, them little pages that be breaking down the lyrics made him go Man, way I was like, sheesh. The average, the average didn't never pay attention to lyrics like that, the breakdown like that since motherfucking Method Man and shit. Like, this was breaking down. He, he was saying shit. <laughs> when he said, what he said, what he said, uh, hide the Bible while God watching. watching. Bro, I was like, this is going to be a long song. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That was the beginning of that. I don't Man, know where this going to go. You know, but then the crazy shit, the beat that came, the song that came on in the front of the video. Bro! He ain't even dropped that yet. I know, and you, he got smoke ready to go. When you call it later. You know, I, it's fucked up though, because that is the hottest song he's ever dropped. That's going, that, that's his back that ass up. But it's Cap. No, I mean, I mean. Be Humble was the hottest. He's talking about number one, I think, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, he can't, he can't, I don't think. Be Humble was the biggest record. I don't think. No, no, don't do that because we just got to talk about that one in the beginning of that video. If he dropped that shit, yeah, which I don't know who instructed him, that motherfucker right man, there, they, when that video, they, when that motherfucker start off with that bitch, with that do slow you think, down, when I hear music, man, shit. Do you think teams is going to be coming out to that motherfucker? <laughs> no, they got but football one, to, to what? They, bro, they got football teams coming out to they not like us. I know, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the whole, that was the whole thing about this whole decision about the yeah. Super Bowl. Yeah, oh, let's, right, let's, right, get right, let's get to that. I was waiting. Let's go. Ask questions. Question. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no. Nah, what, what, well, how do you feel about that? I think Miami and New Orleans had 10 Super Bowls. I wouldn't get mad on 11. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you right. <laughs> it's like, it's, 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 it's Jay-Z, right? Mm-hmm. A new job. It's Jay Z, somebody that we're relatable to. We always get mad at the shit we're relatable to. Trump, right. Trump, Jay Z. We feel like there's touch touchable, and so we can hate, and that shit go viral. It's a conversation piece. We're not holding no conversation about Bill Gates because that's not something that's tangible, touchable to us. Right. You mean we're not Leo or Cohen? We're not having no conversation about them. But you're talking about Russell. You know what I'm saying? Or uh, any black exec that you done heard in your mind. Right. But you ain't gonna talk, you, but only, they talk about Trump like that because he's tangible. He, he, we, he's the only billionaire that was around us. Right. Period. Even our black billionaires wasn't with us like that. You know, well, you know we don't want to do no research. We want to talk now. But it's, it's now, we don't want to talk about old shit. But beyond that, right, what, what was discouraging was the level at which niggas was ready to take it to with Jay-Z, right? It's like, no matter what level you're at, niggas always want well, no, no, to try to no, kill no, you no, or no, they no, want to hey, make them down, type of threat. Down here. Oh. I'm going to say that. Okay. 
So Top wasn't on that. Right. That's Jay-Z, <laughs> <laughs> That's Jay-Z nigga. Yeah, like, yeah. Nigga but I'm saying him. the manner in which they're speaking to I think, him is like, kind of That was a regional argument. Yeah, it, 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 we liken it to the, we just had Hurricane Chris on there and he was talking about 50 Cent came down there and said, ain't no more Ratchet City. Like, in the South, we take this I, I, very I, hard. I, that, I don't think he he knows what the ratchet is. It's not just being ratchet. Right. It's a movement. It's a thing. You know what I'm saying? So I think he was taking it from the negative aspect of, of the shooting and ratchetness. I mean, he wants to improve the conditions of the city versus I don't think he meant by ain't no more ratchet city, meaning the whole title. Of the, right. You know, that, I don't think I don't think he meant that. You know what I'm saying? Um, but Anytime you get something like that open up in your city, man, that's, that's, that's a, a win-win. Major, what the fuck major. are you talking about? That was what a super win. Super win for everybody. For everybody. So now, nah, but we only diss what's tangible. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, you only diss what you think. I remember I had a problem with my baby mama back then. <laughs> oh, nine. <right? laughs> I never experienced no hate, like, right. until... She got mad and blasted me online, talking about I don't pay my child support and shit mm-hmm. like that. Now, I didn't never feel nothing like that for media takeout. Even my girl Julia Beverly said. So maybe he was on media takeout. Yeah, like oh. media takeout. Listen, she said, so look, oh, but, I, she, but she was damn. like, Tony, you popular as news. Um, I'm going to put it out. <laughs> oh, they, oh, they warned you. Julia, she told me that she got to put it out because. Damn. It's news. I didn't ever think I was newsworthy. Right. Not that kind of news. Not my <laughs> yeah. kids, my mom, you Not know what the room, that was ending people back and, then. Uh, I mean, the media takeout. But the bad news lasts longer than your good news. I can get out here and tell motherfuckers that I'm about to be in the uh, the Black Radio Hall of Fame. Yeah. And the good news, but the bad shit, because of the hate that we have for each other, it lasts longer. And the niggas will bring it up. Like, if you have an accomplishment that don't agree with, I'll that nigga child support not paying ass nigga. That was old nine. My daughter, 28 <laughs> years old. <laughs> how, how much is too much to pay for child support? I, I don't know. It depends on how much he was giving a bitch. You know, don't set, don't, don't set it up. Don't be the cocky nigga and set it up <laughs> in the beginning. Giving her everything, giving her this and giving her that. And then when it's time y'all break up and she used to that, don't be that nigga. Don't be the nigga that say, I ain't giving you shit now. Don't be that nigga. Like, I don't know how much too much is. How much was you spending before child support factor came, man? So I really don't know. I don't know. I done heard some outlandish shit. I done heard some outlandish shit, but I, I don't, I done been through the shit so much, dog. I don't really be getting the niggas business. I don't know. I know. I felt like I had one was too much. I felt like one wasn't enough. But then when I started giving the money out of my pocket, she act like I wasn't. And because I wasn't fucking, she put it out there that I wasn't giving her no money. It's like, you know, you know I would never the nigga go back and fuck with my kids' mother. I don't know why y'all niggas be doing that shit. That's crazy. Man. Ain't nothing happening. Man, we done, we done. It's over. It's over. Man, you said some shit about that hating. Man, I remember a nigga, I always talking about Martin Luther King, and the nigga said, man, that nigga, he be cheat, he cheated on his wife. Well, see, 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 <laughs> see, see. That 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 that's, that's, that's his that's his minute way to bring Martin Luther King down to his right. level. Right. What the right. f- is you talking about? That's Martin Luther King, yeah. nigga. What the fuck is you Martin talking Luther about? Martin Luther King got some pussy. Right. So, so? <laughs> what the f- is you talking what about? Me, nigga, you sound crazy as a motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. But in, in but in they but in they way yeah. in they way that's their way of leveling up. Right. Yeah. He ain't no better than me. Right. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy thing. Everybody ain't nobody perfect. Yeah. yeah. If you found out Martin Luther King got some pussy, so what? So, so he fucked up. Yeah. But what about all that shit that you got because of him? What about all that shit you doing right now because of him? Damn, you say that like he living. Like he's still around, like they right. stayed around the corner and yeah. shit. <laughs> like he can defend himself. Yeah, like man, fuck that nigga. I just seen that nigga yesterday. <laughs> like, what the fuck is you talking about? That sounds crazy. Niggas be saying some crazy. I, hey, bro, I be trying my best not to talk to niggas like that. Yeah. I, I when I see an encounter like that on social media saying something like to me, I block them. Yeah. 
If I got a political difference from somebody else and they say something negative to me, I block them. Yeah. I don't waste no motherfucking time. Yeah. If I see a nigga that argue with me and laugh at his own jokes with a bunch of ha 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 emojis, I block him. Yeah. Because there ain't no winning that conversation with that nigga already got his mind made up. He right. Yeah. Anytime a nigga put a bunch of LOLs or ha 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 after they get to talking to you, yeah. they right. You stand out. You got it, bro. Stand yeah. down, nigga. You got it. You, you, might, it. you might as well take it or delete them. Because there's no winning. They, nah. they sticking around for your failure. <laughs> like, like, you ever have a nigga, what you laughing at? What's the LOL for, nigga? Like, yeah. you ever have a nigga that, <laughs> yeah. you type some shit out, yeah. he, he respond back to you, ha, but it wasn't like that, ha, 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 or LOL. You be like, bitch, nigga, what you laughing at? What the fuck is funny? What, what we talking about? Yeah. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. You green ass nigga, what the fuck that mean? Ha, ha, ha. So I just delete him. <laughs> <laughs> I block him. <laughs> See, I'm not even dealing with these niggas. Nah, I'm in it for what? Nah, I'll it's your it. page. If you show, it's your, well, I, I don't like using the word your, because ain't none of this shit. No, so I don't get, I don't get, uh, my page get deleted or something. I don't get that attached to it where uh, I know it wasn't mine in the first place. I'm just going to start over. Right. If niggas fuck with me, they're going to start over with me. If not, it was a bunch of bots anyway. Type shit. <laughs> so for me, I, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Man, on a scale of one to ten, how out of line was Shannon Sharp for leaking that audio of him having sex, bro? Shannon did that shit. Yeah, he definitely did that shit. Yeah, he was trying to set his camera up and that shit fell. He was trying to he was trying to do a flick. Oh, you think he didn't mean to go live? Nah, hell yeah, he did. He was yeah. trying to nigga like, oh, I'm working this over here. I won't put the I won't put the camera over here, baby. And he kicked that bitch and it fell over. That's what happened. Shannon was on some shit, and that motherfucker foot hit the wrong button. But that shit was already active. Yeah. He was trying to make a flick. Yeah. Yeah, go on, baby. Come on, McPhail. Yeah. Yeah, nigga. Now he was on, that was for real. <laughs> he was on some shit. Ain't no, man, it's too much shit. You know, it's too much shit you gotta do to go live. It's way too much shit <laughs> you gotta do to go live. Bro. It's too much you gotta do to go live. Bro. It was an accident, but the setup. Wasn't an accident. Come on, right. Shannon. He was trying to do something. He was trying to make a flick. Yeah, he was trying to, he was trying to keep a flick going. Yeah. You and old girl was on some freaky shit. <laughs> shit got good. Big toe hit that motherfucker. Camera <laughs> fell. <laughs> How would you handle that if like if like some bullshit like that happened to you? I'm just it kidding. It happened to me before. I, oh! I don't give a fuck. I wouldn't care. Wait, what happens? What happened? This thing don't give a fuck. fuck. What you saying? You was trying to make a flick and it accidentally went live? Flicks. Oh, nigga. <laughs> what you talking about? Let's see. This nigga been right. I wasn't high. <laughs> I wasn't high, the motherfucker. I was posing. <laughs> nigga. That shit, I wasn't. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nah, that's why I know that was. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shannon, first of all, learn how to work the camera or the pot or the tripod or okay. whatever you had that motherfucker sitting on, don't kick it. <laughs> Because whatever you had it sitting on and on, it was too close to live. You were filming. Ain't no way. You can't, you can't, you can't, it's too much to do to get to, to get to live. You got to scroll down and shit. What you yeah, telling yeah. the nigga Peaky was doing that? Why you <laughs> and it scrolled down and hit the, nah, man, that, that's cap. No, that's not. Well, what's going <laughs> on in Atlantic? You know, they just recently let go of uh, 50 people. Man, like I said, we those people came up in a, well, those 50 artists that they signed probably never been out. Oh, okay. Anyway. So, so it sounds crazier than it is, but. So they just trimming the fat. Yeah, it, it, a lot of them artists never came out, was never coming out anyway. A lot of them artists were signed to other people. Like, so if you got, if you got a nigga that got a label over there and you got 10 niggas, he signed there. Like, it's, Nobody label has 50 motherfuckers, you know what I'm saying? Like right. to let go. Now, if your, if your subsidiary got 10 artists, so he got eight artists, and then this got six artists, add up to 50 artists. And you gotta drop all them motherfuckers. Hey man, we're gonna keep you. You want us to keep you because your artists ain't doing shit. You gotta drop them. But 50 artists from a label, man, I don't think any eight artists, I don't think no label got 50 artists. Right. So all right. So that, you know, unless it's a bunch of pop motherfuckers too that ain't never came out. We looking at it on the rap side because, but you said, they said 50 artists. Mm -hmm. They didn't say what genre they was in. 
Right. So in that case, it might be because if you're saying pop rock, you know, you know, whatever kind of, you know, rhythmic records, uh, R&B, if you put them all together and you drop 10 niggas from each one, or it's 10 from this one, it's seven from this one, that probably add up to 50 artists, rock, you know, EDM artists, like they probably did, that probably added up to that. But we looking like, ha ha, niggas, you know, I told you, I told you, we <laughs> bear of bad news, niggas. Right. That's us, man. We like to, we want to be mad. <laughs> Fuck seeing them artists, some ass artists wasn't doing shit. They let go. Of, by the time they get, we get it, they let like 73 niggas go. <laughs> well, you clearly seen this at 50, but I guess you're going to tell niggas in the street it was 80. You know what I'm saying? So we, we just, we like bad news. But ain't, ain't one nigga said, well, damn, it might have been rock niggas too. They probably did only release four rap niggas. It could have been EDM niggas. Right. It could have been pop record artist niggas. Ain't nobody saying that in the black community. They think it's 50 niggas. They gone. That label's failing. Nah. They so, trimmed trim the fact though, but you guaranteed it wasn't in the same, it wasn't in the same genre. So do labels still have the potency that they did back in the day where you, they can sign in the artist and change their life. Is that still a thing? Yeah, yeah, because they still got all the, they still own playlists and shit. Like, yeah, they still could do, they still got the machines. Yeah. They got the, what the they could put your ass on MTV. They could put you on BET. They could put you on shit like that. But some people say, man, I don't even watch BET no more. That, that's just the negative nanny sure. ass niggas, man. They're the same they be screaming about pale. <laughs> that's the same niggas. That's the same niggas. Every time you say something, it's gonna be some negative. That nigga right there, you don't need to hang around that motherfucker. Yeah. yeah. Every time something gonna come out of his mouth, it's gonna be something <clears throat> negative. But but what a lot of these artists are like shooting their own videos. They're like engineering their own music, and right. then they're then they're blowing up. You know what I'm saying? Like so now they're like so self sufficient. What's your definition of blowing up though? Um, million. You, you know, I think everybody's that. initial. Reaction is a million views on YouTube. That's a, every artist's initial, oh, nigga, I'm doing something. That's their barometer. I, I, I it, it might not be the right one, I but. if it ain't fake, yeah. Yeah, so. If it ain't no bot, you doing something, you get the 300. So, if Tony. Bot, so, t so, Tony, take me if through. If it's real, if it's real, you know what I'm saying? Take me through, you walk me through, you're an artist, right? Or you, you, you know an artist. He been grinding for three years, mm -hmm. been shooting videos with his people, been engineering, yeah. been doing local bullshit shows, uh -huh. and then chopped up some finally hits for him. Do you sign the deal or do you just keep on what doing, you Because want. Now, hey, and now you're making money on YouTube enough to sustain. You're not on, living uh, a great it lifestyle. It depends on what you want. Like I said, like yeah. you think you're number one right there. Now like I told you. Right. But you might not be, you might be seven, right. depending on who you look talking to. But you made an accomplishment, you independent. You making money, YouTube, you making shows. Um, shit. You um you it depends on what else, whatever plateau you want to be at next. You know what I'm saying? If you just can't seem to get there, then you sign a deal and make sure it's substantial to what you're already doing already. Don't let them give you no bullshit because you can just say, all right, well, I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because somebody along the line ain't gonna come back and see what you're doing. If you keep doing it, somebody gonna give you something better. What type of advice would you give an artist, you know, let's say he is on that, on that, on the cusp of going to that next level, like as far as, you know, maybe he want to sign a deal or maybe he thinking about staying independent. What advice do you give him? Like I just said, just, uh, if you do sign a deal. Right. Um, make sure it's something substantial to what you want. And, and make sure you're ready to give up something too. Right. Yeah, like you can't just think you're just gonna get everything and not give up something. So, and I ask that because, you know, a lot of artists, um, they'll be grinding and then they get with a label and they get everything they wanted right then. But then I guess they get to a certain point it's like, oh, I was worth more. Nah, man, you gotta make sure you know that, do that shit before you. <laughs> right. <laughs> you hey, hey, whatever your contract terms are, you go on and do that, and then you come back and renegotiate. Well, yeah, why do people feel like? Well, I won't even say people. Why do artists feel like that contract should be like 
they should have wiggle room in it. Once they agreed and got all the benefits that they got in the end, and now at the end, it's like they feel like they're being fucked. You answered your own question. <laughs> you gave the answer. That don't yeah. make no sense. Yeah. You signed it. No matter fuck what you go and tell your in the street, your girl, you signed that, nigga. You read that. You had, and the nigga, worst kind of niggas to do it ain't got no lawyer. Right. Bro, like, yeah, like you signed that shit. You got that advance. You went and bought this car. You bought your mama a crib, whatever you did. But just remember, you signed that paper. You didn't renegotiate. You didn't redline, cross out this and go, nah, we can't do that. You didn't do none of that. You signed that shit. That's, you signed it, you know? And so you deal with the terms until it's over. Or until you get dropped. <laughs> One or two, yep, you know what I'm saying? Do you think, um, you know, we see a lot of uh, pill popping music or, you know, we just lost Rich Homie Quan and now people are finally starting to call for it. Well, they've been calling for it a long time, but, you know, to stop the, the drug music. Do you think that we'll ever see that come to fruition or do you think that that's just kind of something that that's going to be around now? Uh. I don't know, I think the drug music always been here. Right. You know, just depending on the drug you're talking about. Maybe they should stop talking about a certain drug. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think the drug music, you know, we lost screw. Yep. I think mm-hmm. the drug music been here. I think you just Jesus. stop talking. Still sitting. Ain't, ain't gonna be me, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Nigga, nigga sing about chicken and die. <laughs> <laughs> Still start talking about chicken. They, they feel like it ain't gonna be them. Long as you got a nigga that feel like it ain't gonna be me, and I'm healthier than that nigga, mm. it ain't gonna never stop, bro. Like it'll, it'll diminish for a minute, Then you see some nigga with a sprite bottle turned up to his motherfucking mouth, <laughs> or and then you don't pick one. Like how high you wanna be? Like niggas be smoking, then they perk, then they surt. Like, how high the fuck do you wanna be? How how really how high are you wanna be, bro? Like before you know it, it's gonna affect you. You just gonna fall out somewhere. Like, not to mention eating the wrong shit. I'm really like on that about the health shit, you know what I'm saying? So, not to mention eating the wrong food and shit. That's like drugs, man. It's like clogging up your arteries and shit. And niggas having high blood pressure, but they think because they skinny that they can't get high blood pressure. Like, nigga, y'all, that's wrong. That's like, you know, and all those things. Usually when somebody pass from a drug, it's something else wrong. That, mm-hmm. that drug made wrong. Right. Yeah. You feel me? And when, when when people stop doing it, it's not because that 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 don't just uh, solve the issue because your outside look good. Your inside still got to heal. Your outside, you can be weight lifting weights and all this, shit, but then but your outside, your inside still ain't healed. Your heart, lungs, nerve, kidneys, whatever you affected, yeah. bladder, whatever you affected. If one of them go wrong, it affect everything else. You know what I'm saying? And uh, so, yeah, man, uh, you, that's, I don't think it's drug music. I don't think it's on cocaine, been around with white people and shit. <laughs> what the fuck? Like, it's, they never stop. Yeah. Yeah. They talk about it in a different way, uh, insinuate. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Do I, you- I, I used to, I'm a, I ain't gonna lie, bro. When I first started seeing niggas using Molly, I thought it was, I thought niggas was gay. Because when I was coming up, that shit was ecstasy. Yeah. And I usually, nigga, you taking ecstasy, nigga? That's what I was looking at it like. I don't know nothing about the pill game. I wasn't, right. I wasn't never around the pill game when I was coming up. Straight nigga, it was weed and packs and, yeah. and pounds and whack and shit like that. I, I, you know what? I'm, I'm going to tell you, I ain't going to lie. I'll take about, I'm going to take, I'm going to take the ex, the ex shit, the pills. First time I heard about that shit was... Dahmer was putting it in people's drinks and shit. Yeah. Man, oh, tell me about you serving Jeffrey Dahmer a pack, nigga. Nah, <laughs> serving a pack, nigga. Serve that all the time. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you served you serve Jeffrey Dahmer? All the time. I knew the nigga. Like, I knew the nigga. Do you feel a little responsible for some of the shit? Hell no. Nah, <laughs> because, nah, because, nah, with us, you know, we was, in Milwaukee, we was at a, a, a before that 
moved over there. We was on the corner. It was a called The Hill downtown. Like it was like coming from downtown from Marquette. It was all, it all went up on a hill. And that's it was on 24th of Kilbourne. That's where we was at. And when he moved over there, we was just thinking that what we thought he was the police at first. He was all clean cut and shit. Walking back and forth from the chocolate factory he was working. We didn't know who the fuck this was. You know what I'm saying? So I, one day I asked him. Called him. I said, yo, man, hey, hey, white boy, come here. He came up. He was nervous because, you know, he knew who the fuck he didn't with those niggas like us. You know what I'm saying? He was like, I said, hey, man, what you doing over here, man? He said, so I, 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 my, my father got an apartment a, around the corner. He was stuttering, so when he gets nervous, he say shit twice. You know what I'm saying? Around the corner, around the corner, and, and I, he paid up. Like, you know, white people tell you their whole story when they're trying to tell you something their whole life. <laughs> and uh, I said, okay, well, you know, you look like, you know, because I knew he was too old to be a student in Marquette. I knew he was too clean to be a hype. So what the fuck is he doing over here? He don't look like the police, but he might be a motherfucking, you know. We had all kind of spots around there. You know, we had a spot in his building. You know what I'm saying? But like, we like, I just asked one day, I wanna know who the fuck he was. So then I started sitting the nigga like he was hanging out with these dudes and he they would want to buy drugs from us and now my niggas would give it to him. And like, it was just nothing. It was just like serving niggas. You know what I'm saying? Oh, this nigga get high. All right, cool. <laughs> this nigga get high. That's what we was on. Yeah. We didn't know. And so you gotta understand when, when we was coming up around there. That was four years after AIDS was like, so we didn't know nothing about AIDS. We thought that was a death sentence when we was young. We was ignorant to this shit. So we thought AIDS, we didn't know nothing about that word. HIV, it was AIDS, nigga. You got AIDS, nigga. You know, we were stupid to this shit. So we didn't really talk to the gays like that, deal with them, our cousins and shit like that. But we, they, we were standoffish from our own family when that shit came out. You know what I'm saying? Because we didn't really pay attention to it to Magic, to Magic Johnson guy that started trying to study what it was. But, uh, but before that, it was a disease, a gay disease. We were like, man, fuck that. And then the police treated it the same way. So that's why the shit was so wild around there because the police wouldn't do shit because they didn't want to touch nobody. You feel me? We didn't fuck with them. So they had their own little thing, you know what I'm saying? We were just selling, we were serving niggas. We didn't know, you know what I'm saying? And he would be out there with the motherfuckers talking on the corner. Uh, like my crib, I was on 24th, you go down the stairs, you could look to the back and you could see the back door where they brought the barrels and shit out. You could like actually see that shit. 20 seconds down the stairs, bam, it's right there. So I knew this nigga, man. We didn't know none of that shit was going on until I got my little security job. And once I started working in the building and we smelled the shit, like, and we asked the superintendent, the African superintendent, what it was. He said it was sewage, some backup sewage. We didn't get the job to start working security in there because I was younger and not the child support shit. I'll tell you how I had to get a job. <laughs> so, and, and so um, my guy that owned a security company would let me do DJ and just take off work and shit because it was just like a little pump faking job so I can have a little something on record saying I got a job. And so, um, We when they we when we got the girl that quit at the front desk because of the smell, so they hired security instead of having a front desk person. And so we we found these empty ass apartments. We got one up at three hundred three, and Jeff Steph was down on on the second floor on two thirteen. And so um, yeah, nigga, we, yeah, it was it was normal. So we served, but you know, it it was just a standoffish kind of thing. Then plus the police had a um. We had a Mexican, well, Spanish, now I don't say Mexican, Latino police our officer. So in Milwaukee, that was new to the, this blue thing that they had, like the white boys, they didn't fuck with them. Like, so they didn't listen to him. They didn't monitor us. They fighting us. I had fights in the street. I had fights with the police myself on the phone and shit. The same kind of shit that just happened to, um, um, what's the name of Miami? Uh, the, the, the football Tariq, player. Tariq Hill. Same, I had that shit happen to me. Same shit. I'm being arrogant. I got my license, had my bag phone, got my leg cocked up all on the motherfucking dashboard and shit. But I'm sitting in an a, a, a area that I know is high crime, as I think of it now. My mm -hmm. ignorant self was like, man, here's my license, man. Squeeze it through the window. You nigga. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He knocking on the window. Hey, roll the window down. I said, man, you got my license. This me. You feel me? So now they agitated. You don't know what these niggas be going through at home. These niggas divorcing all kind of shit at the crib. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. I said, man, here are the lights, man. I squeeze the lights through the window. I opened the door, gave him the keys to the car. This is how arrogant I was with this shit. I said, man, I'm, you know, I'm finally legal. You know, I was going to jail 
driving tickets and shit off for, for nigga driving the revocation six seven times, yeah. nigga. So I finally got my license. I'm cocky, you yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> I gave it the keys. I said, "This is my house right here." So when you get through searching the motherfucking car, close it up, and give me my keys, and I walked off. He said, "What?" So this motherfucker jumped me. We started fighting in the street. <laughs> we really started fighting until he, until I got downtown. They figured out that was Tony Neal from the radio. That's when they let me out. Cause they didn't want, because they didn't want the shit to turn into nothing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. But that shit happened to me before. My eyes all swollen up and shit. Yeah, that, that shit happened to me. Choke, choking, I'm fighting one nigga, the other nigga grabbed me and put my choke holes and shit. Yeah, like that shit happened to me. So that, but that's a whole nother subject. But yeah, nah, that shit, I was really, that, that area where I was at, man, it was, it was wild. So, so that's one of the reasons I got the f on the move to Miami. Yeah. So, yeah. so before we, because <laughs> that's a lot to unpack that you served yeah. Jeffrey Dahmer. No, I just got to know, <laughs> I just got to know, where was you at when you seen the news clip? <laughs> yeah, where were you? Yeah. It wasn't no news clip. Nigga, I was on the phone arguing with my ex on the pay phone. So, you know, I was animated. You know, niggas, <laughs> you argue with your baby mama, but she ain't really there. Yeah. But she, but to the phone, you yelling, bitch, fuck you, bitch. bitch. <laughs> bitch, you slapped a bitch. Yeah. I'm animated as fuck. You know what I'm saying? Are you with her, right? <laughs> then all I see, I see helicopters and shit. And I'm thinking, I ain't, we ain't, ain't none of us around here serving that much for no motherfucking helicopters and shit to be coming. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute, who is this nigga they going after? Well, we like, I, I kind of, yeah, she heard, I heard her yelling. I put the phone down. It was hanging. Hey, 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 bitch, motherfucker, she's still going. I'm nervous. I'm looking at these motherfucking SWAT trucks and shit coming down the street. They start taping off the street fast. I was like, what the fuck? Who is this nigga? First of all, we want to know who this nigga is that got that kind of weight over here that they're doing all this. <laughs> Second, but it wasn't. So I tried to go down the street to see. I couldn't. So I knew they hadn't got to my backyard yet. So I went to the back, right? And the police was in the back. But they didn't let the out to at night. Because it was, it was apparently like you seen news trucks and shit like that. So I was like, okay, they ain't after none of us. So now I want to know what the fuck going on. Man, when it started getting dark, they brought them barrels outside. I said, what the fuck is that? Some mother chick little crackheads. I'm like, that motherfucker was eating people. I said, what? <laughs> Who, Jeff? Boy, y'all had that time. <laughs> like, no, boy. <laughs> <laughs> don't y'all hey, no, no, no. But listen. <laughs> The reason why I don't talk about the shit right, because for black people, we, we saw Marilyn Manson and all this shit mm -hmm. like that. And we saw the way people glorify that kind of shit and haunted, doing spooky this and Halloween and all goofy shit right there. But when it happened to us, that wasn't funny. Yeah. yeah. So when it happened to us, it was like different. You know what right. I'm saying? Because at first he wasn't he wasn't messing around with the dope fans. He was messing around with the gays. And once he got kicked out the the, the gay club for put, putting shit in niggas' drinks, he started fucking with the dope fans around there. Because everybody tried to get money from him. He always had money, and he didn't go kidnap no motherfucker. They was coming to him, but they weren't leaving. They weren't. He was coming to them, and the nigga that got caught was one of our runners. So I was looking at that cat when that nigga was saying. He tried to get no nah, my he was over there. Right. Yeah, yeah, like oh, bro, yeah. Nigga, he was over there. He was always over there. Because he was always handing out money to motherfuckers. Yeah. Trying to date or whatever the f hanging out. He was buying friendships from niggas. He want he ain't had no friends. So he buying, drinking, out there barbecuing and shit in the back. So he's tricking on niggas. Tricking. Even if he wasn't messing with, him, he was tricking. He was like hanging friendly. He wanted yeah. friends. But then he flipped the script. Nigga, yo, his friends, all right, <laughs> long time, okay. That friend, I don't see him no more. So, I mean, niggas was just being able to disappear and nobody figured out what the fuck. We was in the hood, dog. We didn't give a fuck. We didn't want to look at that. that. <laughs> we didn't really pay attention to it. We didn't, because yeah. that was dope fiends. Yeah. Or gay, right, like, right, right, we, we weren't, we didn't. They ain't had no family like that. We weren't looking, like, we weren't in that nigga business like that. We like, all we knew that this Ass whole, ha hallway that the, the motherfucking superintendent told us it was sewer. So we never thought nothing like that was going on, bro. 
Nothing. And I have, and that fucked me up for a while, man, because mm-hmm. I, I knew what we was into and we could have got him if we knew it. Right. Like we knew that, you know, we never made the news. You know, and that was, that's crazy that you say that because it's like, if only if anybody around that neighborhood would have known what was really going on, oh, no, they would have never walking. seen it. No, 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 no they, they would have had that bitch surrounded. But if anybody at the crib knew that was happening, it would have been a bucket slaughter around that motherfucker, dog. Like, it would have been fucked up. Yeah. And any motherfucker that was in the way with, with this, even right. though it was by itself, right. it would have been so bad that niggas would have been taken out and had nothing to do with it. Right. You was with this too? Like, it would have been like that. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? You was friends with that nigga too? It would have turned out the whole thing if really niggas really knew what was happening. You know what I'm saying? And then he went to, when he went to jail, a that I went to school with killed him. Wow. This nigga named Chris, he, he killed him. Chris was crazy. Like, y'all ever had that one classroom niggas went to, had to go back to that one, you going eight, seven, eight hours, and that nigga always in that one room. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the small room. Lunch break, he'd go back to that same room. <laughs> Recess, he'd go back to that same room. Yeah, so Chris was in that class. He was one of them niggas who wore dashikis and shit. And walk down the hallway, hitting lockers just for no reason, noise and shit, just for nothing, dog. Locks on the locker. Every motherfucking break, he was outside. And then you would go in the room and see the nigga sitting up on the motherfucking desk, up on top of the desk, them African medallions and shit on. And then next thing he was gone, he had killed somebody. And he sent that nigga up north. And then said, this is a long story short, the nigga said that God told him to kill him. And he killed another on, just on the side. Oh, you killed your wife too, huh? And killed that oh, motherfucker. Yeah, 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 yeah. For being there while he was finna kill this nigga. A lot of that shit, man, it was, it, it, was, it was a lot to take in for us, man, because that was there. I don't argue with no nigga. Like, how old are you, man? Uh, 42. See, I don't argue with no nigga that's in their 30s about that. That shit happened 30 some years ago. So why are you telling me? When I first said this shit, I don't talk about it no more because when I first said this shit, they said it was cap. You lying. Well, I'm glad. I appreciate that y'all niggas think I'm that young. <laughs> you the live. You talking about? We was there when he moved over there. Not That's... just discovered the nigga. We seen it every day. <laughs> it was so crazy that I stopped some crackheads from robbing a nigga one time, man. In the pockets and shit. White boy. Yeah, that nigga hemmed up in his pockets, hitting in the shit nigga, hitting the nigga. And was, and we was selling the shit, so we didn't want to get it hot. I was like, man, get your motherfucking ass away from that white boy, dog. What the fuck wrong with y'all? Oh, OG, we trying to get money for you. Are you trying to get no money for me? <laughs> you trying to make this block hot. Leave that motherfucker. I said, Jeff, go in the fucking house, dog. That was one of the incidents. Like, they was, you know, but he was trying to buy niggas friendships around there. Was you in the Netflix that, bro? Huh? Was you in the Netflix special? Did they cast you? Like, nah, 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 I didn't want to do that. <laughs> Hell no. Nah. Nah. <laughs> that nigga want no parts of that. Yeah. No, nah, we, we, don't, we don't talk about We don't glorify yeah. that shit, bro. That was, that was nothing that... That's, that yeah. that's... You know, we don't do no folk legend. That was real shit that happened right. with us, man. Yeah. A lot of my niggas, we was there for a lot of shit. Yeah. When I tell, bro, let me tell y'all something, man. When I tell these stories, we might have to come back for part two. We got to. Because <laughs> cool, when, I, when I say these things, a lot of this shit be to niggas that's interested in their 20s and 30s and shit like that. Right. They think I'm lying. They think I'm lying. And this should be real shit that happened. They be thinking I'm lying. And it's it's amazing to them, but it's a lot of real life shit to us. You know, when they hear about Suge and that shit was some real shit that was happening with us, man. We, you know, that wasn't, you know, like <laughs> we talk about gang disciples and that shit was real life shit. That was happening to us. So a lot of us don't talk about that shit like that because mm-hmm. that's real things that happen. Y'all niggas want to turn it into gossip. Or then when you try to put it on the game so they won't make the same mistakes, they try to tell you lying, you know. How did you how, how did you survive that kind of shit? Right. Nigga, it's, we did, you know? We did. And I did it through music. Hey man. Before we get out of here, I I you when you mentioned Tyreek Hill and I know um uh is it really like that down there with the police? Like, do they really treat? In Miami? Yeah. Is, is it as bad as it looked on that? It looked wild. It looked very wild. Even though he was being very cocky, I know there's a certain type of uh, decorum the officer's supposed to have when dealing with a person. 
it's worse in places I've been. Yeah. I'm gonna say that. It's right. worse in places I've been. Right. Um, but shit, you know, Luke and them, them niggas born there, raised there, they, you know, it's, it ain't even a black thing. Like, it was a black office. It was Spanish niggas. Like, it was, um, I think that they overdid it. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Shit, I think the nigga overdid it with me. <laughs> For sure. I'm going to say that, you know, but ain't no, you know, ain't no telling. Like I said, ain't no telling. Some of these niggas, they power. They don't make enough money to do the shit that they do. And that's, that's irritating alone that is in itself the police salary. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. And that have you waking up in the morning with, with, with some power struggle. Right. You know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah, like it's, I think it's everywhere. I think it's moments for niggas. I think it's, it was a motherfucker named Blondie that used to get into it with us all the time. Take niggas dope. He like that. You know, he made it up. He made it, he had motherfuckers paying, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So he made it like that to stop, didn't want to fuck with him more. And that's when the shit started happening, you know what I'm saying? Around that motherfucker. But it's, 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 and it's motherfuckers that will encourage niggas on the force to do. It's like a clique of niggas. It's not just like a, the police force, it's a clique of dirty niggas. Right. And, and as a whole, they're not telling on each other. That's against their code. They gotta protect each other, but it's really like, it'd be like cliques of niggas, you know, white boys, police, cliques of niggas that's out doing shit. You know what I'm saying? That, and it looked bad on police as a whole. As a whole. And that's my experience, you know what I'm saying? Right. I ran into some niggas that's, that I fuck with. I ran into some niggas that did me favors when I was out there, you know what I'm saying? So, right. take the favors, is just, when you're in the street, take the favors, just is like, talk about Kamala, you know, prosecute niggas and shit like that, nigga. You sell dope, nigga. <laughs> you sell dope, nigga. Hey, yeah. What you think come with the You already know you got a fucked <laughs> up prosecutor in this in the city, in the state. Mm -hmm. But you taking your chances. It's like eating that up ass food. You taking your chances, fuck it. I'm I'm gonna do it. If I get but, caught up by her. What be killing this shit is the, like the, you sell big old dope and then you put it on the Instagram. You put all your money Bro. on there. <laughs> Bro, like. We in the new age, though. I'm going to ask y'all something now since we, since we talking. Shit, sure, yeah. I'm going to ask on, 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 on camera. Why y'all ain't never put no single out? On, uh. Go look at Real Life Street Stars by Carter Park. <laughs> Real Life. I'm asking. <laughs> no, why, why not? No, no, no. Yeah. On, on, uh. On um, Yeah. Why y'all ain't never put no single out on Jaguar? A single, a record. Shit, Jaguar, can we put a single out yeah, with you? Let's, let's, Please. Uh, I'm asking. But, but talk, talk to us about that, because you were telling us about Jaguar's history from you. Being I nigga, mean, like, Jaguar was highly anticipated when we was coming up. Like, <laughs> shit. The girl that was with the roots? Oh, nigga, shit. She was bad. But I'm in the industry, so, you know what I'm saying? From, from yeah, Jag was one of them ones, man. So that's why I was like, damn, she talking and she telling all this stuff that's happening, but she got all these numbers, but why this is a perfect time to put out a record? That's me. I'm always trying to turn something right, into something. Right. We're gonna chop it up. We gonna chop it up. I'm always, hey, nigga, I'm always gonna, trying to turn some shit into something. Make it, yeah, make it <laughs> For real. Like yeah. nigga, you got all these numbers, y'all got these motherfuckers. 1.2. Congratulations, nigga. Y'all got Thank you, brother. 1.2. <laughs> but man, but shit, now it's time to, you know, turn that corner. Yeah, for sure. You know what y'all gonna do? Turn that motherfucking corner. Yeah. Shit, we gonna have to get with your ass and figure some shit out. I'm gonna keep that. <laughs> See? So that's what I do. I, I'm always thinking on some other shit. Like, yeah. nigga, what y'all gonna do? See, y'all got all this motherfucking numbers and shit. Nigga, drop a motherfucking video with y'all numbers and that shit, shit. Man, I don't know. Man, you know, it just, even past, when you're dealing with people, or when you have a certain amount of power, Especially like once you've built it up to a certain level did and you hand the nigga. Huh? Have y'all ever asked? <laughs> Jaguar? Yeah, yeah, we did. We were supposed to do a lot of folks. Nigga cap. Did y'all ever no. ask to no, put no. a record no. No, out? Not a record. Oh, not a record. No. I know that's why I said cap. I know y'all did. Yeah. Hell no. Nah. That's a single. Y'all talking about a live performance of what? Y'all gonna do a live performance of her stuff or something that y'all got out no, to promote? Stuff. See what I'm saying? Like, if y'all collab to put out a record together, like. 
Then yeah, hell yeah, she can perform. She can, she perform an eye shit too. We gonna get yeah. <laughs> That's a A and I. So I look through all the other shit, and I'm like, shit, yeah, nigga. Yeah, and a certain amount of numbers, right? Am I'm not lying? Yeah. Is a deal in yeah. some places, right? Yeah. Okay, single deal at least, right? And then we got the man yeah. who can push the button. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just. I'm just, you know, I'm just a DJ. Nah, music. <laughs> <laughs> look, 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 hey, look, look, hey, look, 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 hey, look, hey, look hey, nah, he, he just a DJ now. Hey, 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 we just left the boy. He, where he ain't gone? What you mean? He left. What you mean? Sure. No, he didn't. He left. He gave it to them and then he took it back. He, <laughs> he took it back. <laughs> now, nah, when he left the first time. Yeah. Um, nigga, nigga, was hurt. That was, nigga, you should listen to that every morning. Yeah, when he left the first time. Uh, oh, you know, doing the movies and doing his shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Doing his own shit. But then Tom retired. And who was the only person that could suit that fit fit Tom's criteria that Tom. how he was like Tom was a outgoing doing concerts and shit. Who the fuck else fit that? Like yeah. Ricky, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So he actually took over all the Tom stations. Yeah. And Dallas was one of them. And so he was like, well, come back. on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah, that's you know, basically. You Where know you want to be based there? You want to be based in Miami? You could have been based in Atlanta. You came back to Dallas. No, it used to piss me off about Ricky. <laughs> oh, shit, what? You'd be listening to the radio, he'd be like, and now, back to the devil music. <laughs> 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 Bro, and you would just kill your mother. <laughs> hey. You beat it. And now. <laughs> <laughs> what, were we, what, were we, what were we just saying about Charleston? Only? <laughs> nah, for real. He keeping it real. Are we responsible for what we play? For yeah. sure, yeah. <laughs> you playing it, nigga? <laughs> Are you yeah, responsible nah. for playing the record that promote popping pills? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nigga, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you talking about? <laughs> he, make, he make you want to put on some gospel. Uh, yeah. Now I'm saying. <laughs> 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 mask <laughs> off. <laughs> mask <laughs> off. Hey, mask <laughs> off. Hey, mask off. Josh shot the four or five million copies. Hey, who is the who is predict predict the future? Who is gonna run the rap R and B game in the next five years? R and B game, both R and B and rap. Ah, uh, as a label, us. <laughs> but let me see, um, convict. But uh, futuristically, I, I'm gonna future really say that they finally gonna take the take the cuffs off Chris Brown. Hmm. And you finally let him just let loose. War shows and everything. Bro got like a hundred hits, bro. Listen, <laughs> it doesn't listen, even make no war, sense. War, I'm talking about war shows and everything. Oh, they're going to finally let him get, yeah. Yeah, get his I mean, just due. You can't. This dropped sensational October 20th last year. That shit still rang out. It's number one. Dog. October 20th of last year. I played that shit on my top of my wedding picture when I got married in November. And this shit is still... Him and Davido don't really miss though. Who? Him and Davido, the 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 artist that's sensational. He they don't miss, bro. I'm just saying. When he get with a, a Nigerian Chris artist, Brown, phew, listen, crap. Chris Brown sensational is the reason why the Afro beats outside of Tim, the Afro beats sound is fading. I know y'all ain't. Yeah, it's true. Heard. I thought you was going another way. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. <laughs> because the more the more people that make it Americanized, yeah, it just you lose value. It's not losing value. It's just like he's you know, actually throwing actual uh, Afro artists on the song. Don't matter. Damn. What's your favorite Afro beats artist right now? Stop it. I, right now, he by his damn self. By his self, dude. That's the one I listen to. Some people say Burner Boy, but nah, not no more. Who else? Burner was tough. Rem, uh, what's the Remo or what's this? 
Uh, See, uh, is niggas getting the the shine that they was just getting three years ago? Burner on uh, Afrobeats. Are y'all y'all seeing a uh, Burner Boy? Yeah. To me, is the only one. Tim's, but she's not. I don't know if she's Afrobeats, but Tim's. Oh, and Tim, oh yeah, for sure. Oh yeah, Tim's yeah, the biggest. Tim's the biggest one right now. She going crazy, bro. And she got that money. Tim's crazy. But but I'm asking y'all. I'm saying I don't know. You hear artists, American artists, is making Afro tempo records. Right. With the same beat drums and all that. Yeah. My little nigga got one. I'm talking about. <laughs> So and saying, I bet you like, bitch hard though. Too. I'm just saying, like, oh, you think that the more like the more records that they make like that, now that you can understand what they're saying, is affecting the Afro beats records because you really can't understand what they're saying. You think that that's affecting? It's definitely affecting. It's like niggas when they went back in hip hop and they're trying to make reggae records. And niggas are trying to oh, stop it. It's done. You know what I'm saying, nigga? And then you had Shaba out there. You had everybody out there. Niggas started using the beats. Niggas said make... Shaba. <laughs> I'm talking about old shit, like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. And, then, and then when they started doing it, yeah. rapping on top of it, it was like, ah, oh, this shit's bullshit. <laughs> and then it went away. Yeah. So do niggas just yeah. destroy yeah. everything? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> niggas are parasites. Ace of Spades. Yeah. Niggas Dead. destroyed Ace of Spades. <laughs> Ciroc. Yeah. Dead. Nigga. Any kind of champagne. Once niggas start drinking it out of the bottle and not in the pail, in the bucket. So <laughs> <laughs> once they start drinking it out the bottle like it's a bottle of soda, so <laughs> I remember the, I remember being able to pop my first mo at but I remember I was you had your shit in a nice cup <laughs> with glasses around and shit. And then you see a walk past with that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Boy. You think you have to blow all your shit with the bitch, right? <laughs> you got the motherfucking bottle holding it down here, drinking it like this. Meanwhile, you trying to be romantic, candles and shit. Yeah. Mm -mm. <laughs> shit fucked up. <laughs> man, Tony, man, we want to thank you for coming in. We appreciate you sitting on man, the bro. couch, man. You are on bro, the couch, bro. You take you can take that motherfucker with you. Killed this motherfucker. <laughs> Oh, we'll get you can have one of these, we can have one they don't see it but you have one of these little blue ones man we just, we just want to thank you for stopping by man appreciate it y'all you are definitely it. legendary your own right you got any shout outs uh man just, just shout out to everybody that's grinding man shout out to everybody that's in their own way don't try to be like nobody else man just be you you know what i'm saying even if it take longer uh, you know i feel like i'm just sprout right now you know in, in my own way instead of helping everybody else now I'm doing me. So uh, don't forget about you in the process of helping other people. That, that's my shout out. Don't forget about yourself and try to mend situations that you might have handled wrong Amen. in the past. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm doing, I feel like I'm doing that subliminally with a lot of people that I kind of probably, nah, I ain't gonna f that probably. I did rub a couple of niggas the wrong way with my, with my not arrogance, but anger when I first came in this game mm -hmm. uh, and street shit instead of business shit, you know, so a lot of that, you know, I was quick like, F you nigga, what you want to do, nigga, like over bullshit, you know what I'm saying? And so make sure you don't get to the point where you, whatever you went through at home and your anger and the stuff that you carried on your life don't affect your business. Cause that's, you know, that's basically what it was for me. You know what I'm saying? I'm a lot, if y'all ask some niggas, I'm a lot milder than I used to be. Yeah. And it's crazy. Like, you I'm, probably could be you more turned up. Than, you could probably be way more turned up. Than I you. was, man. <laughs> yeah, I I'm was. talking about now. Like, when I started to cool. Now nah, I'm, I'm grown. I got wife and children. I ain't got no more hoes. I'm out the game. <laughs> <laughs> man, I, you know, I, you know, <laughs> man, you know. Huh? You say that, but I feel like when you get. When you figure out you got the wife and kids, there ain't shit to do but turn up now, shit. Nah, man. I, I got the distraction out of the way. If I'm turning up, we turning up, me and my yeah. wife. Yeah, for that, sure. I ain't. Nah, that's what I, was, I got I my lady. Up, I ain't turned up every kind of way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I ain't done all kind of, I ain't turned up any kind of, every kind any, of. Any way you can turn <laughs> up, I done did like, it. I'm, I'm talking about like, it's like ain't nothing else to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
as far as on some man shit. Right. Ain't nothing else to do. Like, you know what I'm saying? I, you know, and I, you know. Man. You we, know, like when I, before I go, man, I, I want to just say pussy ain't viral no more, okay? I done seen, you done seen every kind of, these chicks got the African bitches acting a fool now. Oh. Like it ain't, it ain't, I didn't see you seen it all. You seen it all. Like the motherfucker that's watching y'all now is some other kind of motherfucker. <laughs> because the nigga that you trying to attract, they ain't there no more. Right. It's too much. Like y'all brought up Sexy Red, but they there now. That's the, that's the girl. That's, you know, we, what, how much more pussy can you? Can you get right? Search and see that's different. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, you got, you, yo, y'all fuck up my OnlyFans? Yeah. See? Where? Like, it's like you got to just be, some, be doing some outlandish <laughs> right now to get some money. <laughs> Nigga, uh, Jack say, Jack say it's a sex demon. These niggas got sex demons. He said what? Jack say niggas got sex demons. I mean, you know, man, <laughs> hey, that's, a, that's what you want to call it. it yeah. I think everybody at some point in this game has been in a position where they could have been considered that. Mm -hmm. I could have. Some of the shit. I could have. You know, I could have been that until I, I just cold turkey. It's like, man, this shit. Yeah. They get old. I was mad at me like a motherfucker. <laughs> I'm done, baby. I'm cool. I'm not functioning like that no more, baby. I was like, I'm cool. It get old. I ain't, I ain't, it's not, it just, it just, it's, it's, after you've done it all, you just survived it. You ain't get, catch nothing, nigga. Man, sit your ass down, nigga. Yeah, nigga, 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 I'm out the whole business. And I ain't hoeing. I ain't hoeing, and I don't want no more hoes. I'm out the game. Y'all can have mine if I get some extra. <laughs> We're gonna get their numbers. <laughs> We're gonna get their numbers after this. Yeah, you can go and grab it. <laughs> I don't even know if I, I don't even know I got their numbers in my phone, bro. I have to go through my history. I have to go through my history and just print some out for y'all and get it. To y <laughs> man, Tony Neal, we thank you so much for coming to sit down. For sure, for sure, hey, brother, for sure, man. man. Hey, this is the best part, Tony Neal. Hey, man, I, I enjoy y'all show. Hey, I watch man, it all we, time, bro. Thank you, man. We, if we don't know niggas like you was watching, we done got that Jaguar. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Neal. Appreciate it, man. You are a real yeah, life street yeah. star. Yeah, for sure. Appreciate it.